Hey, Undisputed listeners, before we start the show, I wanted to tell you about our brand new Fox Sports app and website, foxsports.com. Reimagine for the modern sports fan. Go ahead, download the new app right now. You don't even have to pause this episode. Every day on the new app and website, you'll see the top stories in sports, plus a rich world of written content, videos, social media, and analytics to give you a 360-degree view of the most important stories of the day. Streaming live TV has never been so easy or elegant. Every Fox Sports game, including all pregame and postgame shows, are just one click away. For the extra invested fan, we also go deep with real-time wagering lines, trending prop bets, win probability, and key player projections. Download the new Fox Sports app or visit www.foxsports.com now. Let's start the show. Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. They've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Good morning. Welcome to Undisputed. I'm Jenny Tapp. We skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good to see both today. How mm. are you doing? Doing better than somebody I know. Uh, I'd say I'm doing a little better because there was a bet we made once upon a time that the Patriots, you said, would have a better record than the Buccaneers. <laughs> uh, and I'm starting to like my side of that bet a little, little uh, better. I had to hand yeah. those skip, but did you know things like extenuating yeah. circumstances well, I beyond mean, our control. Yeah, you did add Cam, but now you've lost this, 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 and go, Jenny. <laughs> A lot yeah. of this, yeah. this, yeah. this, this, this. You're this. right. My turn. My yeah. turn. We do have some news coming out of New England, and that is how we begin the show today because Patriots Pro Bowl linebacker Dante Hightower is the latest player in New England to opt out of playing the 2020 season. Running back Brandon Bolden and starting offensive lineman Marcus Cannon are among five total Patriots who have now decided to not play this season. It's also worth noting that Hightower just had a child. So, Shannon, what does this tell you? It tells me that <laughs> these young men are very, very responsible. Skip, they're factoring in. And I think this is a decision that you have to make is that Dante Hightower and his wife made a decision, fiancé, wife, they made a decision. We just had a small child. Is this something that I'm willing to run the live with the risk? That's there. Skip, I can tell you, if my grandmother was living with me, my sister, my sister, uh, my nephew at the time had cerebral palsy. Mm -hmm. Skip, it's a no-brainer. I'm not playing. But that's a decision, and I think, Skip, when you look at a lot of these guys, Skip, why, what are the reasons that they play? For family. Mm. Well, Skip, if I'm playing for my family... And my playing puts them in harm's way. What am I doing? Yep. So I think that he made a very, very wise and responsible decision. Mm -hmm. Marcus Can Cannon is a cancer survivor. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a no-brainer, Skip. Yep. Anytime somebody has a high morbidity rate that's in their home, and that's what the, that's what the schools are dealing with. Mm -hmm. Okay, kids under the age of ten, Skip, they don't you know they don't get the disease as easily. They don't carry it. But what about the ten and over? Well, if yep. somebody, grandparents, mom, dad, has a morbidity rate at home, you bring that home to them, then boom. And so I think these guys are making very, very wise decisions, and I think everybody has to make a decision that's best suited for them. Skip, it's not one size fit all. Well, you see what Hightower did. Well, he must know something that I don't. You see what Marcus Cannon did. They must know something we don't know. Yep. They're making decisions based on the best information they have that's best suited for their family. And I have no problem with this whatsoever, Skip. He's making the decision best best for Dante Hightower, Cannon, and so forth and so on. Mm. And I think at the end of the day, that's what players are going to have to do. What is in the best interest of my family? Nothing else matters. My family, because this is why I'm playing. You listen, Skip, when all these guys say, you know, I do this for my family, my wife, my kids, my, my, my family, my mom, my grandpa. That's what they're doing it for. Mm -hmm. Well, if you're going to run the risk of putting them in harm's way, it makes no sense to do this. Yeah. Okay, so the bigger question to me is, will this set the dominoes falling across the league today as camps open? Mm -hmm. Will lots of veteran players or even younger players start to say, gee, maybe he's right. Maybe I shouldn't even try this. Will the dominoes fall to the point that it will put in jeopardy the National Football League season? I don't believe I, it will. I'm going to say no right. on this one because I do think this is something of a special case. Correct. So, again, I, I don't find it a huge shock that Dante Hightower opted out. 
because, as Jenny mentioned, you went into, on July 16th, he had his first child. Mm -hmm. And a few days later, he did the podcast of um, the, the, McCourty. the McCourty brother, the, the twins, mm -hmm. obviously. Twin. And he said that I don't have words to describe the feeling of bringing another human into this world. He, he tried to put it into words and he said, I just can't tell you right. how it's hit me to where I, I don't even know how to explain to you what it means to me. Right. Okay, so he's 30 years old. Mm -hmm. He's going into his ninth season. Mm -hmm. He's made two Pro Bowls. Last year he did mm -hmm. make the Pro Bowl. And he has three rings. Mm -hmm. He has Shannon Sharp's three <laughs> rings. <laughs> yeah. It's a lot of rings. Yes. A lot. How many hundreds and hundreds play this game with zero rings? Correct. He's got three. He got to play with Tom Brady. Tom's obviously gone first now. First round draft pick. Yeah. He's first made round. money. Alabama. Yes. He's made a lot of money. Yeah. And, and knowing him, I'm pretty sure he's banked a lot mm -hmm. of money. Yeah. So he is willing now to, as they say, put a toll on this season. It just moves. He, he, he doesn't, it, it won't count. Right uh, for him, he doesn't get in the current you know, season, he, uh, so he'll right. still next year he'll have he'll be going into his ninth season, and, and all he'll make this year when he was scheduled to make eight million dollars, right. pr pretty good money, right. is a hundred and fifty thousand because he Who does next year's salary. Yes, so so all the, he has no pre existing conditions. Right. Marcus Cannon, you mentioned, right. is a cancer survivor, right. so he would get three hundred and fifty thousand. Correct. Okay, so it's it's not much money. It's a big financial decision, mm -hmm. but if you're if you're positioned to make it, good for you. Right. Way to go. Mm -hmm. But again, the dominoes are only falling so far in New England. Right. So now we got Brandon Bolden, another guy entering his ninth year mm -hmm. with three rings. Mm -hmm. Okay? And was scheduled to make 1.3 million. Not great, but right. not bad. Right. By most people's mm -hmm. standards. And and Marcus Cannon is 32 with three rings. Mm -hmm. So so it was, to me, much easier for those three New England veterans who've all won three rings right. to say, okay, maybe I don't want to take the plunge and the risk right. that a lot of people are about to take, Correct. right? Mm -hmm. So that brings to the to total there a couple of backups, the, a backup fullback, backup offensive lineman. So five New England mm -hmm. Patriots have opted out. Right. There, so far, all we know, there are only nine across the whole league right. who have so far opted out Correct. as camps are opening mostly today, okay, next couple of days. Mm -hmm. So so what do we see here? Is, is this a runaway trend? Is this, a, so to speak, outbreak of players saying, no, we won't even right. try? Right. No, I don't see it. Right. I'm, I'm sorry. I, I get him. I get Marcus Cannon. I get Brandon Bolden. After that, I still say most players will say, I think it's okay. There was the, I don't even know how you say his name, but the offensive tackle, <laughs> Lauren Duvernay Tardif. Tardif, right? yeah. Okay. The offensive yeah. lineman from the Chiefs. Yes, but he's a, 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 a medical doctor yes. who's been fighting COVID on right. the front lines right. in his native Canada. Correct. So he just said, no, too risky. Right. Okay, get it. I get, and he just won a ring last and Basically, year. he said, if, I, if, if I'm going to contract this disease, I'm not going to contract it playing football. I'm going to contract it treating patients. Which he which he he's been doing. He's at, been on the front. Risk of doing. He's been on the front line. Skip, I just think the thing when you when you really look at it, Skip, at, and for the, it's really a no brainer when when you look at Skip and when you break it down, when a person's on their deathbed, how many times they say, "Man, I wish I had more money," or they lag for someone's life, loved one. Money is the last thing on the night. Maybe if you say, "Well, if I had more money, I could have done a better job of taking care of them." Yep. But in a situation like this, it seems to be, for me, a no-brainer, especially with Marcus Cannon. Yeah. With a pre-existing, because like cancer? And, and, and the NFL laid out a lot of the pre-existing conditions, Skip, in which they, you know, would take into account. And as you mentioned, we get the $300,000 towards next year. Skip, I, I get that. And so for me, it's like July 16th, the baby's what? So two weeks old. He's got a report here in the next day or two. Mm -hmm. Like, you know what? Nah, I can't even in good conscience. And he's so okay. elated to, to bring a life, mm -hmm. to have a life. And he's the responsible mm -hmm. person. He's responsible for this life. Yep. Nah, nah, nah it, it, it doesn't work for me. And so, Skip, I don't, I don't hold it against the guys. And like I said, I do agree with you. I don't think we're going to see holes there. Well, that's, I'm going to do that. I'm going to do that. Nah. Because mm. uh, a lot of guys are not in the position 
to forego that kind of money. Like you said, he was a first-round draft pick. He got first-round money. He's got a new contract. So Dante Hightower, as, I, uh, as you mentioned, I believe he's done good with his money. And so for that being, with, with that being said, I just think he's making the right decision. And each guy, the 1,500, 1,700 players they are, you're going to have to go by case by case. A lot of these guys, Skip, they don't have anybody in the home. It's them by themselves. So it's an easier decision for them, okay? Mm -hmm. They have no underlying condition. Mm -hmm. They have nobody in the home with a morbidity rate, high morbidity. So it's a no-brainer for them. Maybe but they if, haven't saved a lot of money. Right, exactly. Maybe they have a lot of expenses. Right, but if I got mom or grandma or, or, or an elderly person or I have a child that has needs, nah, nah. Okay, so what do we see across the NFL landscape? We had another little incident come up in Minnesota yesterday. Right. Now they have four rookies who went on the, the COVID list right. where you've either, either tested positive or been exposed to somebody who did test positive. Right. But they're... Their head of their COVID protocol, their infection control officer, who's also their head trainer named Eric Sugarman, right. he tested positive. Right. And he believes he got it from his kids. He has four kids, and I, I, I don't know how many of them right. tested positive. Right. But so, so he got it at home. Right. So, again, it's an isolated incident. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that factored in right. to the, the rookies being around him. Right. Maybe, mm -hmm. maybe. And obviously, we still have the unsettling issue in baseball in which, what are we up to now? Marlins 11, yeah, yeah, 14 total with mm -hmm. coaches. Mm -hmm. And now we await the results of the Phillies who are playing the Marlins. Mm -hmm. We still haven't heard their test results. Thought we might get them last night. Right. And yet, Rob Manfred, who is the head of baseball, he says this is not a nightmare scenario. So... Okay, so so he's saying we we have our protocols in place. Right. We expected some of this to happen. Right. We have expanded rosters. We're ready to move forward, right. even with the Marlins. Right. Okay. So let's see if they can move through this because it's not shocking that one team, because somebody made a really bad right. choice, mm -hmm. had a little outbreak, right. maybe a big outbreak. And that's the thing, Skip, is that it spread so rapidly. Yeah. And it, but Skip, even that being said, even though they believe they have this under control, that seems like a high number. 14, they can't have more than 100 people around there at mm -hmm. one time. And you're talking about that many, Skip? I mean, they say uh, in the general population, 5% is high. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about 14 out of 100? Yep. Jeez. Good luck. I, I mean, I, Skip, I hope, because I, I, I don't want them to shut down baseball. I mean, he just got back. But it just seems to me, I don't know how they, they he's, he seems so comfortable mm -hmm. saying that he has this under control when you have that many. Now, if it was across the leagues, yeah, we get that. With all those teams, you got 14 different, you know, players and coaches, but you're talking about one team? Yep. That seems very high to me. So Dr. Fauci continues to say that both football and baseball need to be in bubbles as the NBA is in a bubble. And it's just, it's logistically... I think impossible. Well, well, they might have to have football island. Like mm -hmm. Dana White has developed yeah. fight island, Skip. They might be the situation where they board everybody up and take them somewhere, New Zealand, or wherever, wherever they can be, Skip. But I just don't see a place in the U.S. where you can house. Think about it, what, you, what you're asking. You're talking about, Skip, 46-man roster, and they say you can have what now? 12 to 16 on, 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 on uh, um, the practice squad. Yep. So you're looking at about 60 players, mm -hmm. plus the coaches, which is another 15. So that's 75. Front office staff, medical. Skip, you're looking at 100 people times 32. How the, what, what, but where? You would need, you need, literally need, a, you need Rhode Island. Yeah. Basically, you no, have to clear I, I mean, Rhode Island. It's not a city. It's a state yes. that you're, you're trying yes. to create. yes. And then how many, so you're going to have me playing games, Skip, you're going to be playing games every day. Somebody going to play a game on Monday, Tuesday, you're going to play two games, at least two games a week. You just can't, what you're going to, you can't just play on Saturdays, Sundays and Monday. Mm. It seems logistically impossible, especially no at this late day no to bubble. try it. They don't need no, they, they, I still believe that if players will play by the rules off the field, bingo. off the field, bingo. they got a shot. Yes. They got a shot. And that's what you're going to have to have happen, Skip. I believe the NFL will set forth all the med all the proper protocol, mm -hmm. all the cleansing and the disinfectants and all, yep. all that they're going to do. But at the end of the day, the lion's share of the onus is going to be on the players because they're going to be the ones that's coming and going. They're the ones that could possibly put themselves in harm's way. 
going out to eat, going to nightclubs, going to people that you don't know. Because for the first two weeks, you're going to get tested. It's hard for me to see a scenario where these players aren't getting tested at least two to three times a week, Skip. Mm -hmm. And so you might be around people that's never gotten tested or gotten tested once in six months. Yep. And so that's, that's where the problem could possibly arise is that you around someone and you don't know what's been going on with them. Oh, I, man, I know them. Okay. But do you know who they know? No. Nope. And do you know who they know that they know? So that's where the problem could arise, Skip. But I believe the NFL and the teams, they're going to probably have as many pure real stations mm -hmm. in their facility as we have here at Fox. And I believe they'll do all the disinfecting and washing it down and making sure everybody's doing, throwing, not a whole lot of touching. But they can only do so much. And the more I see the prototypes of these helmets with that shield, as you yes. said, that, that folds all the way under the chin. Right. It looks good to me. I, I don't know if it'll be that pleasant to wear it's and not. play in it. Because it's hard. Yep. Because you got to understand, Skip, think about it. Even when we have on these masks, Skip, yep. and they, they, I mean, just the, your breath is going right here. Mm -hmm. And I didn't I didn't fasten my chin strap, Skip, because I, I, it just, I felt that I couldn't breathe. It felt restrictive to me. But in a situation like this, you're dealing with extraordinary circumstances. So you're going to have to take extraordinary measures. So if that meant playing with a shield that came all the way down to my chin, that's what it meant. All right, back on the field, back to New England. Mm -hmm. I still say this is a bigger blow, Dante Hightower, oh, yeah. to the Patriots than it is to the NFL yeah, in general. Yeah. I can make a case that that he was the most valuable player yes. on this defense, even above Stephon Gilmore. He was heart, he was soul, and he was the brains of the operation. He's, 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 he's the signal He's caller. the quarterback, yes. Okay, so you've lost him at age 30, sort of right in the heart of his prime. Mm -hmm. And on top of that, you lost Kyle Van Noy, and you lost Jamie Collins, right. and you lost Danny Shelton, and you lost Elandon and Roberts, and you traded Deron Harmon, and you're adding some young players who are unproven. And I say Bill Belichick is on the hot seat. Right. If he wanted to be able to prove or reprove his genius without Tom Brady, he's got every <laughs> ample opportunity. Now, without Hightower, you are starting basically over on defense. So now you want the man to try to replicate what he's done for the past 20 years with one arm and one leg, one arm tied behind his mm -hmm. back, and his shoelaces tied together. Huh? That is is correct. that what you want him to do? That, that's what I, <laughs> I... I don't want him to do it, but he is in that spot. Now. He is. Skip, if you go back, it was really Dante Hightower's play in that Super Bowl mm -hmm. that changed the complexion of this ball game. Do you remember what Belichick called him once upon a time? Mr. February. Yeah. <laughs> why? Because he always made plays in Super Bowls. Yes. Which is why he has three rings. That was the he he made the play, Skip. Against Atlanta. Atlanta, Atlanta yeah. had to had it dead to right. The guy was wide open. It was about to be a touchdown. <sighs> and the next thing you know, it's a strip sack and then like two plays later, New England, and they start the comeback. Mm -hmm. So this is a huge, huge blow for, like you said, the Patriots. I don't believe this is going to reverberate through the league, but it is a it's a monumental blow. For the and, Patriots. And I just don't see where they're heading. Again, we're going to talk about Cam later in the show, but is, is he still Superman enough to lift this team up on offense to even rise above what they don't have on defense and make them viable, make them a contender? With all the players that they lost and now these guys, he's going to have to be a lot of superheroes. He's going to need to be Superman, Batman. He's going to have yep. to be a lot of different things. And I'm sure some Patriot fans looking down the road to the future would say, well, why don't we just call this one off, basically, and play for Trevor Lawrence, okay. right? <laughs> huh? That ain't, that ain't, Coach Belichick's not wired like this. I don't think so when, either. And when you, want, Skip, when you think about it, when you won as much as they won, the fans, that's the expectation. They expect every year because for the last 20, for the last 18 years, they expect you to be in the Super Bowl. It wasn't about winning a division. It was Super Bowl for them. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, yo, we tanking for Trevor. No, yeah. no, no. That, that tank for Tua that Miami was supposed yeah. to do it, ain't no tr tanking for ter uh, uh, Trevor with Coach Belichick. And, and by the way, just for the record, I'm not completely sold on Trevor just yet. I am not either, Skip. Not sure. Yeah, because he definitely did not play as well in his sophomore season as he did in his freshman season. Agreed. No mercy. 
Well, we are only two days away from the NBA season resuming when the Lakers take on the Clippers Thursday night, and LeBron should be feeling refreshed. LeBron, along with Anthony Davis, Cal Kuzma, and Dwight Howard, all sat out LA's final scrimmage against the Wizards yesterday. The Lakers did come away with a 123 to 116 win. So, Shannon, surprised that LeBron didn't play yesterday? I am a little surprised, Skip, because I thought I thought he would get like at least a quarter. Uh, to get this last little bit of conditioning out of the way. But I guess that's something that you really don't worry about with LeBron is conditioning, knowing that he was staying on top of his game during quarantine. Uh, he played about 14 minutes in the first, 14, 15 minutes in the first game. I think he played about 25 and a half in the second game. So he got a little bit over 40 minutes of actual run time in these, uh, two, in these two scrimmages. I'm not surprised with AD Skip, considering he got scratched in the eye the other day. So you've got to figure that he wasn't going to play. There's probably a chance he's going to wear, wear some kind of protective eye cover in the first game against uh, uh, the Clippers. I was surprised that Kuzma didn't play. Considering Skip, when I look at it, I know what I, for the most part, I know, I know, I know exactly what I'm going to get from a LeBron. I believe I know what I'm going to get for AD. If that's Kuzma, that's the unknown. And what we're trying to now, if he's going to give us what he gave us the other night, Skip, well, we good. <laughs> we gonna be sitting, we gonna be sitting pretty. But I don't, I don't know if I can count on that, Skip, on, on a nightly basis. But I like what I saw from the guys that did play. Mm. Caruso is going to play a lot of minutes, Skip. You can't not play. LeBron's not going to be playing 40 minutes, especially in the first round. Mm. So he's probably going to get his customary, what, somewhere between 33, 36 minutes. And then the rest of those minutes are going to have to go. Uh, and he does play, a, Caruso does play a lot with LeBron mm. and handles the ball. So he's going to play a lot. But I love what I saw from JR. I love what I saw from Deion Waiters. Because what you need with a guy with waiters, he's a guy that can create his own shot. He can shoot off the he can shoot off the dribble, mm -hmm. but he can put the ball on the floor and get to the hoop. Jr. was making shots. That's Jr. Skip, you know you're going to get some of that with Jr. You're going to get you're going to get some falling out of bounds threes. You're going to get some, and then you're going to be like, "Damn, Jr. What what the mm -hmm. hell are you doing?" But I like what I saw. I like what I saw. But I'm a little surprised LeBron didn't get at least say a quarter of mm -hmm. work in. But I ain't worried. Mm -hmm. But you, you you I tell you what. You you go over there, man. I sure wish you to talk uh, tonight off on mm. Thursday. That's what you gonna be saying. Really? Yeah, I wish you to talk tonight off because mm. he's gonna get that work to Kawhi. <sighs> right now, all I'm concerned about <laughs> is what happened yesterday or did not happen yesterday. Because I must tell you, I was shocked. <laughs> LeBron James played zero minutes yesterday. This after he played three quarters on Saturday against Orlando, mm -hmm. and I told you, I was in awe of it because he's played the third most minutes in the NBA history, mm -hmm. and I thought it was a little bit dangerous, but I was I was applauding it. I was lauding it because it looked like LeBron is all in. He is just hell-bent to go take this championship mm -hmm. by the throat right. and do what he needs to do in the bubble to be at, at supreme max physical peak going into Thursday night as the seeding game starts. Right. So I, I was stunned that you, uh, you even predicted yesterday, or you just said your gut feeling was, you, you thought he might play all the whole game. Yeah. And I was, I tuned in, it was noon our time out here on the West Coast, mm -hmm. and I thought, this is going to be interesting. Let's see what LeBron's right. got today. Right. And I'm waiting, yeah. and I'm like, he's sitting. Yep. But... Beside him on the bench was his co-MVP candidate, A.D., who did get poked in the eye mm -hmm. on Saturday. Right. So I got that. But it led me to wonder, is it possible that LeBron opted out yesterday because he did not want to play without his co-MVP candidate and make you know, expose himself to looking bad? Oh, but like, it, but... oh wait a second. What about what happened last year? What what happened with no AD last year? Every time LeBron played, it looked pretty shaky. He went 28 and 27 by himself. But Skip, he had a little bit, but here's the thing, though, Skip. He had a bunch of young guys that didn't understand. A talented bunch of young guys. I mean, okay, okay they B.I. and Lonzo and yeah. Kuz. And but Skip, B.I. needed to be in a situation where he can dominate the ball. And he was never going to be in that role in L.A. And if you notice, since Zion has gotten into the game, has come back, B.I. stats have dipped. And that's what, and so he was never going to be the ball dominant player that he needed to be to showcase what he can do. But now that we, I ain't worried about LeBron. LeBron's like, hold on. You do realize I got nine trips to the final mm. without A.D. 
I got three, four, I got three chips without AD. Mm. I got four MVPs without AD. I'm good. Now, I love having my side. I love having my, we, cause we ride we together. Mm. We ain't no bucket seats. We got a bench seat. You know mm -hmm. the old bench seat cars. Mm -hmm. That's how we roll. Mm. We ain't separate. We equal. Mm. Yet, did, was it possible that yesterday LeBron decided, because everything is premeditated on his part, I don't want to unmake my MVP case that I made so strongly down the it's, stretch? It's already of, over. Well, is it over? Yes. They say they, they already had to have the voting in. Mm. Well, does he want to make himself look bad without AD? Does he want to send a bad message? These games are on TV. Yeah. Am I right? I, and he, I was, he was so convinced, he like, I'm going to make sure I'm not going to play. He didn't even have shoes. Mm. He was barefooted. Was he? Yeah. Mm. Well, uh, it just gives me cause to pause because I wonder about if he's thinking about, I, I want to keep our feel-good momentum going, and I don't want to go out there with, with two guys. Again, you just brought up two guys that I don't know that LeBron completely trusts. In Deion Waiters and especially J.R. Smith, he trust he trust he, tr he, tr he <laughs> I don't think he trusts Jr. He knows Skip. He knows what he knows. Jr. can make take big shots. He's done it. He's seen Jr. do these. Uh, Deion Waiters show. I mean, Skip. Here's the thing. Now, Danny Green played about 18 minutes, and I don't want to read too much into that. But I believe Deion Waiters and Jr. They're going to be getting some minutes from Danny Green because basically it's the hot hand. If you hot, you play. If you not, you sit. It's as mm. simple as that, Skip. Okay. Was not JR involved in the lowest moment, you could argue, of LeBron's career? Yes. Again, I think he had the ball in his hands. He should have pulled up and taken the shot. He got yes. the switch with Steph on it. <laughs> it was his shot to take, but he didn't take it. He passed it to George Hill, who went to the free throw line and predictably missed the second free throw. Right. And maybe predictably, Jr. lost his mind yeah. for a moment and yeah. lost track and lost right. lost his his senses. The hit right? got in his eye. Well, maybe I I don't know what happened, but, but but again, he dribbled out the clock. Do you believe had LeBron James not wanted Jr. Smith on this roster? Do you believe Jr. Smith is on this team? Now you're dealing with the most for, outside of Jesus Christ, the most forgiving man that we've ever seen. Mm. Well, it's funny because he's had his issues with Jr. and he knows the good and he definitely knows yes. the bad. But was it because they were so desperate at that point that they just needed to add? Remember, they lost Avery because yeah. Avery opted out right. for all kinds of family but, and Black Lives remember, Matter issues. But remember, Skip, they had already signed Deion Waiters. Mm -hmm. So theoretically, did they really need Jr.? Well, yeah, you could argue. They needed another body. So LeBron said, you know what? We won a lot together, Skip. I mean, Jr. has been there for for, mm -hmm. for 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 three of these things now. They won one and they lost two, okay. but Jr. has been there. Okay. The last time I saw Jr. on any kind of video happened to be a TMZ video on <laughs> the night of May the 31st here in Los Angeles, and it was the night of the first big protest, a yeah. Saturday night, and somehow Jr. had parked like one block away down the street, yeah, on the side and, street. and some little guy was. I it looked like he was going to vandalize Jr.'s. Was it a car? It was yeah. like a truck, more mm -hmm. like. But Jr. went Mike Tyson on him, yeah. right? Yeah. Right out yeah. in the middle of the street, just went Mike Tyson. Yeah. We're just beating the hell out of him, yeah. right? And we got to see it on TMZ <laughs> video. Is that the guy you trust? Because I know Jr. enough to know I like him, but but he can. He's got one sort of loose screw up right. there, and it, it affects him on and off the floor occasionally, where he just sort of loses track. Well, I guess the products that you could normally get in a normal situation, you won't be able to get. Hmm. Yeah, so you can't get that stuff in the bubble. Really? I mean, well, can, I mean, can you? I mean, you got the man down in the bubble that can get can get you that. And speaking of those products, uh, do you remember <laughs> the, the last big story involving Dion Waiters happened on a team plane yeah. in which there was a the THC edible yeah. that, that he sampled on the yeah. team plane coming yeah. home or yeah. coming back in a trip. He was right. in Miami, obviously. Yeah. And he had a panic attack yeah. over that. Do you remember this? I do remember it. Do you realize he got suspended, I believe, three different times just during this season, during this regular season by Pat Riley? He, he, he changed. He changed? Yeah, he changed. So, man. So I remember he, the text. Give you know, okay, he was sick. Uh, he wasn't able to come to practice. Mm -hmm. And then he uh, takes a picture of himself on a yacht celebrating his birthday. Do you remember that? Okay, he was celebrating his birthday, and Pat Riley said, not on my watch. You are suspended. So he got, 
Huh? He Same changed. Man. He just suddenly flipped the switch, joined a LeBron James who once upon a, on a time he played briefly with when LeBron went back to Cleveland. Right. And reportedly, LeBron was often aggravated, was the word reported. He was aggravated with Deion Waiters because of his bad habits and his ball hogging on offense. Right. And his lack of defense, something that JR often suffers himself. Right. I think both are capable of playing defense when they decide. But when they have not decided to play defense, you have liability. You do. But I think the thing is that I don't know how much Deion Waiters is going to be playing alongside LeBron. But you need somebody that can create their own shot mm. when LeBron is off the court. Mm. Remember, that's where they ran into the problems. If you look at LeBron's history with teams, is that nobody really could cre create other than Kyrie and D. Wade. So everybody else was dependent. So when LeBron went to the bench, mm -hmm. and Kyrie is really not, Kyrie's really a two. Kyrie can create his own shot, but he's really not the guy that's facilitating for someone else buy that. In, the trip, in, in the typical point guard, mm -hmm. in, in the point guard form. Yep. So that's what happens with LeBron is that when he went to the bench, there was no one else that could create their own shot. LeBron needed to get the ball to them. And so now we have a guy in Deion Waiters that can create his own shot. Mm. So I don't, like I said, I don't know how much they'll play together, but if LeBron goes to the bench, Deion Waiters can get buckets. He mm. can get his own shot. So it's going to be interesting to see. Okay, so I warn you that now you have three X factors in your rotation because I think they're all in the rotation. I know Kuzma's in the rotation, and you just you brought it up. I never know what I'm going to get from Kyle Kuzma. You can get gangbusters. Yeah. You, you can get difference makers. You don't know who for the Clippers is going to lead the bubble next either. Well, you okay. need to worry about right. that. Okay. Don't worry but, about but those. I right now we're talking about your team. I'm going to talk about my team in just a moment. But the point is that you've got Deion Waiters. Do you trust him, LeBron? Do you trust J.R. Smith in the biggest game, at the biggest yeah. moment against the Clippers, let's say, dare I say, in the do you remember, conference Do finals? you remember game seven? When all of a sudden it started to slip away, the Warriors had opened up a double-digit lead, he made and it was JR, JR that came back and gave a boom, 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 boom. Do you know how many shows I've done during NBA Finals featuring LeBron's teams in which the story of the day that we talked about for two, two and a half hours on television was, where is JR? Yeah. What, whatever happened to JR? Right. Would, would somebody put out an APB for JR's jumper? <laughs> yeah. You remember this? Oh, yes. Like, okay, that's what you're up against. So you got X Factor Kuzma, X Factor Dion, X Factor JR. All in big games. You could get huge out of all three. I, yes. I, I love yes. Dion's yes. game. I yes. love it. Yes. And he is fearless. All three are fearless shooters. Mm -hmm. And all three are capable of going shockingly cold and not being there when you need them the most. That is absolutely correct. Okay. But that's, those are risks. Now, back to my to team, and nobody's been watching my team probably except me, but Ooh. my team now is the Clippers. They look a mess. And, and they do look a mess <laughs> off the court, but <laughs> on the court, because they've had so many defections from the bubble, uh, this guy has been playing like 20, 25 minutes a, a day or night whenever they play. And? And, and you, you wouldn't, I don't know who he is, but he looks like he used to be Joakim Noah. I, I don't know. Do you remember Joakim Noah? Do you, do you remember that guy? It's been a year since he played basketball. But this guy looks like a much better Joakim Noah. This guy looks like he spent the last year in the weight room because he's got shoulders and he's got biceps and he's got clout in, in the lane that I've never seen before. And I think it's Joakim Noah. I think he is flexing new muscles for the Clippers. And did you see what he did on Saturday? He had five blocks and he's still as good a passing big man as there has ever been in this league. We he own can him. really distribute. We own him. You, you own we him? We own him. Yeah, just wait. I think he's starting to own this league we own for the him. Clippers. You remember what I he, think he's played his way right into the rotation <laughs> for the Los Angeles Clippers. You remember he all, the, he all that, all that, the LeBron James don't mean nothing, and we just sweep him right up out the playoffs really? every year. Okay. Every year we get him up out of there. When he was Chicago, you remember, Skip? Do I? Yeah. yeah. Got him right up out of there. Yeah, but that was your man Thibodeau, right? No, yeah. oh, so that nice. was, it's <laughs> Tim's fault. So nice. or Tim's fault. Tim's fault yeah. that Joe Kim no. So whose fault was it when he mm -hmm. went to New York? All I know is he is playing huge for the Clippers. Oh, did you see Jimmy Bell yesterday? Mm -hmm. So watch out. Get it out. Watch out. Watch, yeah, watch, he's, watch. he's capable. Yeah. 
I think the Lakers are going to have their hands full with Joakim playing 20 minutes of impactful basketball. Skip, you got to realize high we, impact. Skip, y'all got we got two, we got two, we got three big men. Mm. We got AD, we got Dwight, and we got Javale. Dwight's knee is barking. He didn't play yesterday either. I don't know. We good. Mm. We good. <laughs> All right. Interesting. Thursday night, both of your Zubas teams. looking in like this here. Like. Squared off. I am so looking forward to this. <laughs> oh, good stuff. Uh, Skip, we actually do have to talk about a different team of yours mm. and a quarterback specifically because just last night it was announced that Dak Prescott came in at 46 on the NFL's top 100 players list voted on by the players themselves. <clears throat> it's notable that Dak failed to even crack the list at all the previous two seasons after coming in at 14th three seasons ago. So, Shannon, after Dak missed the list the last two years, how do you explain Dak being ranked 46th? I think he's earned the respect of his players. Um, I, I think they, they view him now as a top player, Skip. And I agree with them. I think he should be on the list. Um, I think he should be higher than some of the guys, uh, uh, the Tanny Hills and the Cousins. He was higher than those guys. I'm disappointed walking to him that wasn't on the list. I think that so was, far. Ain't maybe, no so maybe far. He, well, they maybe say, he will be. They said well, they only had five. They said the Eagles had five players on the list. They've already named all their five. Is that true? That, it's over? Well, that's what the, I was reading the, the, uh, the Philly thing, uh, uh, a thing out of Philly yesterday, and it said they were supposed to have five guys. And so, so Carson Wentz did not make the top 100 NFL players as voted upon by the NFL players. That's, 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 that's what it looks like to me. But, Skip, when you, when you, I think the thing is when you look at Dak, he was fifth in QBR. He was, what, second in passing yards. He was fourth in touchdowns. Uh, it's hard to say that he's not a top player. Mm. I think the thing is, Skip, is that once he developed a consistency, because when you look at what he has offensively, I believe had he gotten this team into the playoffs, Dak's going to be in the 30s. He might be in the 20s. You cannot have Zeke, a top five back. You can't have Amar. You can't have... <clears throat> Gallup and miss the playoffs with that offensive line. Even if your defense isn't that good, Skip, you've got to be able to get into shootouts and win shootouts. And um, for, for whatever reason, Dak was unable to do that. And so I think they hold that against him, Skip. But I believe that once, because as you mentioned, his first year, obviously coming in as a, a rookie, you're not going to be ranked. But they thought so much of him the next year that he was 14th. No, is, that, that was off his rookie yes. year. Yes. Yes. So that go, yeah. goes to show you yeah. what they thought of him. Mm -hmm. And I believe, yeah. Skip, had he made the playoff, Skip, there's no question in my mind. With the stats that he put up, Dak's going to be in the 20s or the 30s. Mm. But uh, he deserves to be on the list. Um, I believe Dak is a better quarterback right now as we sit here than he was when he was ranked 14. Mm. Because, Skip, the offense flowed through Zeke there. They asked the, the, Dak to do a lot more now than they did then. Mm. And I believe he's doing a great job of that. He just needs to develop the consistency. And you cannot, with that offensive talent, not make the playoffs. That's mm. unacceptable. Mm. And that goes directly at the feet of the quarterback. So, for the record, uh, I want to remind our viewers, the man who just spoke, seven times in the last 13 Cowboy games last year, <laughs> the man who just spoke glowingly of Dak Prescott gave him Fs. Yeah. He gave him seven Fs in 13 games. Oh, well, now that I look at it, Skip, Cousin Mike should be higher. Really? Cousin should be higher than that? He beat him! Okay. You told me the guy's head-to-head. -head. Josh Allen beat him head-to-head. -head. Mm -hmm. That's what you told me. You know what? Kirk Cousins did not beat <laughs> Dak head-to-head -head because in those last 13 games, the best game he played by far was against <laughs> Minnesota on a, I believe, Sunday night. night. And again, at the end of the game, after he drove them all down, all the way down to second and two at the 11, mm -hmm. after completing an eight-yard pass to Amari, and Amari was on fire, all, obviously, at home that night. Yeah. Uh, they took the ball out of Dak's hands and went Zeke, 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 game over, because he was about to go win the game against the Vikings. So I thought that was the best game he played over the last 13. He started out with three very strong games against what you called garbage teams, yeah. and I'll give you that. Yeah. And then after that, Pro Football Focus ranked him in the last 13 games 15th in the league, which is about in the middle of the pack. Right. Okay, so here's my gut feeling and my reaction to all of the above. I sat here exactly one year ago when this list was finished right. being unveiled mm -hmm. on NFL Network, yeah. and I went out of my mind crazy nuts. And I said, there is no way that Dakota, Rain Dakota Prescott, Rain, <laughs> R-E-I-G-N, Rain Dakota Prescott, 
does not belong in the top 100 players in this league. And what was he coming off the year before? They were voting on a guy who did get Amari at midseason right. the year before and took off. And in the last 10 games of that year, I'm going back two years ago mm -hmm. to the 2018 season, right. over the last 10 games of that year, he led the league in completions. I can make a case that after he got Amari, he was the best quarterback in pro football down the stretch and into the playoffs. In the first playoff game at home, he outplayed Russell Wilson. I dare you to show me he didn't outplay Russell Wilson. Mm -hmm. He beat him with his arm and then in the end with his legs. And they won the game 24 to 22 and came here to Los Angeles where Dak outplayed Jared Goff. Just be, it was QBR was 74 to 54. Dak over Jared Goff. He played well enough to win a game that the defense spat up, just choked it up <laughs> because they couldn't stop either Gurley or your little man from C. Denver, J. little C.J. Anderson. <laughs> they couldn't stop either one of them, and they ran wild over, around, and through them they that did. night. And, uh, and still, Dak <laughs> just kept fighting his guts out and kept them in that game, and they barely lost it by one score, 30-22. to 22. And off that run, Dak gets voted out of the top 100, and I went out of my mind because you know how I feel about quarterbacks. If if you know the game and you appreciate the impact of that position, it's the most important. It's 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 not. It's, I can't go more important than pitcher in baseball, but it's right up there with pitcher in baseball. Right. So the point is, you can't tell me that every starting quarterback shouldn't be in the top 100 somewhere because of the <laughs> just the important. virtue of the position they play. <laughs> so my point is. How can you go from Dak ranks 14th off his rookie year? What did I tell you? I said, I thought he had the greatest rookie mm -hmm. season I've ever seen a rookie play because he gets thrown into the fire in place of Tony Romo, who was beloved in Cowboy Nation. Right. And he here was. they go, and they go 13 and 3. Right. And he threw for 305 yards and three touchdowns against Aaron Rodgers and company, and it took two intergalactic field goals to beat him from 56 yards and 51 yards for them to pull that out of the fire at Jerry World in the playoff game. So off that, they say, he's the 14th best player in the league. And I'm like, thank you. I agree. And then he goes two straight years voted out of the out. top 100. Out. How do you do that? It's impossible. So how do you go from 2018 being the, maybe the best quarterback in football the last 10 games you go from out of the top 100 to last year, you go 8-8, eight and eight and you don't make the Pro Bowl, and the Hall of Famer Shannon Sharp gives you Fs for seven of your last 13 games, but you suddenly, mysteriously, inexplicably vault all the way from out of the top 100 to 46. You, you vault up 54 places. I don't even know how far out of the top 100 he was. He might have been 150th. Yeah, yeah. Know, they, they, right? they uh, will right? change it to the okay. top 150. Yeah, top 150. There. Yeah, so, so he vaults all the way up to 46th. And when this hit my screen last night, I had it on, I, I just fell out of my chair. I said, how do you do that? How do you explain that he went all the way up to 46 off a year in which he did not play great down the stretch last year and he did not go to the Pro Bowl? And they did not go to the playoffs. So so how do you justify it? I don't know. I don't know what they're thinking, but I got a theory. I believe that Dak Prescott turned into last year a sympathetic figure <laughs> among players. Among players in the league, he became the number one sympathetic figure in all of pro football because Jerry done him wrong. I don't think Jerry did him that wrong. I think Dak did it to himself. But most players... Maybe every player I heard talk publicly about this. What did we keep hearing? Pay the man. Yeah, sure. Pay the man. Right. Pay the man. Pay him what? Pay him Mahomes money? Well, there's well, this thing called a cap. So how realistic are you to say, pay the man what he's asking for? Really? Pay him $45 well, million? Well, that, well and, and the play, look, I don't believe it's because of sympathy. I think that when you look at it, Skip, he was fifth in QBR. He was second in pass yards. He was fourth in touchdowns. That's worth something because at the end of the day, it's still – the NFL is still based on stats, and 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 if you can accumulate those, it's hard for me to see a scenario where the top, you know, five, six running backs are not going to make this list. So you look at Dak's numbers; his number says, "Yeah, he should be on this list." Forty, almost five thousand yards. 
yeah, he should be on this list, fifth in QBR. You love QBR. So his QBR said he was the fifth best quarterback in all of football. Skip okay, so how was he not on the list a year ago? You, you were totally good with the list a year ago. Yeah. You said he doesn't belong on the yeah. list. Yeah. Well, how did he not? Mm -mm. He played the last 10 games at the hot, the top of his position. He played this year, Skip. Hold on. You said Zeke wasn't the same guy. Mm -hmm. That's what you said. Yeah. Zeke led the league in rushing. So I guess they looked at it like, well, man, Zeke doing all this thing. Dude, Zeke, this is because of Zeke. You got them little bit of yards that you got because Zeke's running the ball and you play action. Well, this year they held Zeke down. That's what you tell me. And he had to do it all on his own because mm -hmm. you said he never had Amari on the road. Mm -hmm. So now he's doing that with one hand tied behind his back. He doesn't have the running game he once had, and his number one receiver can't get open on the road. Okay. So they factored that in. Okay. I've told you all along, I still have Dak Prescott in, in the top 10 of quarterbacks. There are 32 starters, so top 10. I've got him ninth. Okay. Go that high. You wouldn't go that high. Okay. But I would, and I'm trying to be objective about it. But if he's the ninth best quarterback, then clearly – He's in the top 100 players because he's probably in the top 20 players if you're the ninth best quarterback by virtue of the power of the position. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> you and I, look, I get it. And, and when the players when the players vote, it cares a little. And it hurts more. That's why I you agree. Hear, that's why you hear them speak out when they get they, they, 70 true. or 80 because this is the player. These are what other players that play against you. Yeah. This is what they think of you. I agree. So, Skip, so for me, I, I was like, okay, I, I mean, I see some guys on here. There's no way you can tell me that Kirk Cousins, Ryan Tannehill, Josh Allen, and Kyler Murray are better than walking to him. You just can't convince me of that. But the players believe that, they, that he is, that okay. they are. All right, so let's do Kyler Murray. Again, I fell off my chair when I saw he ranked only 90th. He did make the top 100, right. but he's 90th. So you're telling me right now, Kyler Murray is only the 90th most valuable player in pro football. Do you know what would happen? Let's do, last night they revealed all the way down to 40, okay? okay. So in the, the 50 down to 41, you've got 50th was Darius Leonard, then Mark Ingram, then, then Clowney was number 40, right. okay? I, I'll give you any one of those three guys, including Clowney, who's still on the open right. market. And if you, you right now went to Jacksonville and you said, Jacksonville, you can have Kyler Murray or Clowney. Kyler Murray or Mark Ingram. Kyler Murray or Darius Leonard, who's a fabulous young stud mm -hmm. player. Who would Jacksonville take? Would they take Kyler Murray or any of those they three? They like Gardner Minshew. They do not like Gardner <laughs> Minshew. They, they know they are in trouble at that position. They would take Kyler Murray in a heartbeat. Yeah. They would say, give me Kyler Murray because Kyler Murray, is, you want to talk but, about a little stud. But, but, Skip, but Skip, what players don't do is what you do. They just look at a player and they say, he balling out. They don't look at the position and say, man, he plays a more important position in that one. Or he plays the more important yep. position in this one. That's not how players evaluate it. That's what evaluators do. But a player, I'm just looking at the guy, can the guy ball? Okay. So you're just saying, no matter what position he plays, can he ball better than the quarterback can ball? Do you think that Clowney can ball better than Kyler Murray? I do not think, no. I do not think Clowney had a better season last year than Kyler Murray. Thank so you. So that's what you're asking. Not because Kyler plays quarterback, because I just think Jadavian Clowney had a down season. And that's what, and, and, and sometimes, Skip, the guys get on there, and it's just like the Pro Bowl. Guys been on there, they just, okay, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, him. Yeah, him. Yeah. Or he has a, a good game, but he has a game on national television where he flashes. Well, that's all you How need. many times were you asked to vote for Pro Bowl teams mm -hmm. and you're looking at an offensive line position and you're just not you're, sure? Yeah, you just didn't watch right, them. Right. You, you were too busy trying to get ready for because, your game. Because the offensive lineman, he can't get stats. Okay, no. you look at, okay, the running back. Okay, look at the quarterback. How many sacks did they get? Uh. So that, and, and so once, that's why linemen skip, they get 9, 10, 12, 13 Pro Bowl. Mm -hmm. Because once the guy gets in there, you know him by That's the only guy you know. So Zach Martin and Tyron Smith and, and the big kid out of uh, uh, Indianapolis, mm -hmm. they're going to go to a bunch mm -hmm. of Pro Bowls. And once they get one or two, <laughs> then it's just like... It's 10. You're, you're godfathered in. It, yeah. but because you, they can't get stats. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's not like they're catching passes no. or rushing for yards or anything like that. But mm. I don't know. Somebody's going to go have to a, a answer me why walking to him ain't on here. Mm. Well... Or he might be 20. He might be in the 20s, so I was going to hold out. Maybe. <laughs> They're going to hold out. Yeah, possible. No mercy.
Kendrick Perkins didn't hold back, saying Lou Williams needed to do better after his trip to Magic City that got him a 10-day quarantine. Perkins also said it's sad when a rookie like Zion Williamson acts more mature than a veteran like Lou Williams. Lou fired back on Twitter, telling Perk that this incident was the only dirt Perk had on him and that whenever they see each other, Perk says it's, quote, just TV. So, Shannon, whose side are you on here? Skip, before I get into that, Lou, you were wrong. Why is it so hard for you to understand you were wrong? Mm. So let me get this straight. And this is what irked me, Skip. I didn't get mad if a player missed a block. If a player missed an assignment, that didn't irk me. Mm. What irked me if you didn't have your ass to meetings on time, if mm. you were late for work? Because you're telling me your time is more important than mine. Good point. So are you telling me Lou Williams is the only player that's in the bubble that has a favorite restaurant and is missing those meals? Mm. Every other player in that bubble has a restaurant that they love part going to. Mm -hmm. And they can't get to. Yep. So now Lou Williams taste buds are more important than everybody else's. Yep. Lou, you wrong. Why not just say, you know what, guys, I was wrong. Yep. I went for a very good cause. I went to pay my respects to a friend's father. And instead of, you could have got curbside. You say they off, uh, 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 on, the, on the website, say they offer curbside. Mm -hmm. Someone said that you've had meals catered by them before. Why not get it catered? Mm. Lou, you wrong. And everybody rushing to your defense to my own. And Skip, I made a joke of it, but I also said, Lou, you were wrong. You did. Because guess what? Paul George, he had probably has a favorite restaurant. Kawhi, Kawhi ain't got no favorite restaurant. He just want to go home and eat. He, mm. he got the restaurant. Mm. But there are a lot of people. And then, Lou, you want to get mad. Why are you upset? You were wrong. You the one that put people in harm's way. Mm. The objective was, Skip, first of all, once you leave the bubble, you're at risk. Because the, the NBA can no longer control the setting or the environment that you're in. You were supposed to go from point A and come back to point B. Mm -hmm. You went from point A to another point B and then C. Come on, Lou. All you had to do was like, bro, just go down there, pay your respects, and get back on a plane and get back to where you were supposed to be. What they're trying to do is minimize mm. the potential risk of an infection getting into the bubble and it spread like wildfire and shutting the season down. Why can't you understand you were wrong? Now, Perk, let me give you a little word of advice. Say what you say, mean what you say, and let it go. Mm. Don't get into no confrontation about these guys wanting want to squab with them. I said what I say, Skip, and I'm, I keep it moving. If I see the guy, he wants to dap me up, pay respect, fine. Mm -hmm. If he pretends like he don't see me, hell, I pretend like I don't see him. Mm. I keep it moving. Yep. But don't go back and forth with him. Lou, this is how it works. You're right. That might be the only the fifth year. Skip. You know who Bill Buckner was. He won a batting title, went to the All-Star game. But what's he known for? That ball going between his legs. Mm -hmm. That's his one blip. Yep. You also know this guy played for your favorite team, Jackie Smith. Mm -hmm. Jackie Smith is in the Hall of Fame with me. Played 17 seasons. Went to five Pro Bowl. Was I still all haven't gotten over that. What's he known for, Skip? He dropped He it. dropped the touchdown. So and, and it was like a little lollipop flip right in his bread basket, and he just dropped it. So, Lou. And, that, and he was a very, he, he played your position, yes. and he was really good. Yes, he was very yeah. good with the Cardinals, and I think mm -hmm. he only played one year mm -hmm. with the Cowboys. Yep. So, Lou, that's how it works. Yep. One, one misstep, mm -hmm. one misdeed can undo 15, Very 16, 20 years Agreed. of great service. You yep. know how this works. Mm -hmm. So, Lou, instead of being upset, instead of having all these other guys run to your defense, just admit, I was wrong. I handled this the wrong way. It shouldn't have happened. Moving forward, it won't happen again. Perk, if I could give you any advice, don't go back and forth with them. You say what you say and be done with it and mm. keep it moving. Mm. Here, here. Love everything you just said, and I appreciate everything you just said because you sit in the same sort of seat that Kendrick Perkins yes. is now attempting to sit in, and he's trying to learn how to play a new game because right. it's a very new and different right. game. Back first to Lou Williams. I appreciate everything you said about his lack of contrition. He's showing no contrition. There's no, I, I'm sorry, I shouldn't have. There, there was none of that. Right. There was no back down. There was only... Uh, 15 years in this business, and he's talking to the, the tweet to Perk, and the most dirt you have on my name is stopping to get wings during a pandemic. Talk about, speaking of pandemic, talk about sanitizing what happened, right. like trying to wash your hands <laughs> of it. Yes. 
That's like Benedict Arnold saying, hey, I just stopped by the British camp just to say hi. Right. No, you didn't. You defected. <laughs> you were giving up state secrets. secrets. Yeah. You were trying to give up the fort at West Point to the British. Correct. You you betrayed your company. Yeah. It, you, it was treason. Right. Lou, it was treason. Right. I'm sorry. And now he's trying to say, I just stopped by. I'm pretty sure he stopped in. in. I, I think he right. wanted to sit down and eat at right. the restaurant. Correct. And he's acting like he was just picking up. And I don't think he was. And the NBA is not buying either because 10 games of quarantine, that's part punishment as yeah. well as safety. Right. right? There's right. some punishment right. in there because... Nobody loved this. Doc right. Rivers said on Saturday, I do not love this. Basically, I, I was not happy with this. Right. Now, he said yesterday after their game, we, we you know, he made a mistake. Now, let's move on. They're okay. trying to move on. Okay, quickly. why can Doc say he made a mistake? That's but Will can't it's say it's he made a mistake. Pretty simple that you could say made a mistake. Now, back to Kendrick Perkins and back to the end of this tweet from Lou Williams. He says to Perk, and stop laughing and saying it's just TV when you run into me. Okay, from the seat I sit in, the business I've been in for a long, long time, mm -hmm. that, Mr. Williams, is a serious accusation you just levied at Kendrick right. Perkins. You're saying that when you run into him, that Perk is admitting that his commentary on TV is nothing but a fraudulent act. Right. Like, I'm just acting on TV. I'm right. just saying what I need right. to say right. to keep my job. Right, right. I sure hope that's not the case. Right. And I think I know Perk well enough. Right. I think he speaks his heart. Sometimes he plays to the crowd. Right. I, I think sometimes with some of the LeBron stuff, he goes a little overboard. Right. But he does have some big opinions. Mm -hmm. Some people dismiss them as a little crazy. I know how that feels. Right. But, but I think he's speaking with his heart. And I hope he understands going forward that you cannot care what Lou says, and you cannot run into him and say, ah, I was just, I was just right. cutting up on TV. Right. No, you weren't. No. This is, to, to me, extremely serious business. Right. And I want to say publicly that I appreciate how you embrace this business from day one. Yeah. We have been doing this almost four, four years. years, and from day one, you took a stand. And sometimes you are criticizing young athletes who are playing the game that you played at the highest of levels, mm -hmm. and it's not that easy to do it no. because they're going to come to you and say, Sharp or Ankh they, or they do. Shay, they do. You know, what are you doing they to do. me? And sometimes it's a young black man speaking to an older black man, right. and it's hard on you because right. their attitude is like, how can you do this to me? And you say, it's because I'm just speaking the objective truth. This is the way I see it. Mm -hmm. I don't have anything personal against no. you. I am merely rating your performance. Skip, they know they can't bull jive me. They See, the thing is, Skip, when, when I took this seat and I talk about football players, you know, a lot of times if you didn't play the game, they dismiss you where you didn't play. Well, if you played the game, they say, mm -hmm. well, you didn't play well. Well, I played okay. the game. I played 14 played years. Played very well. Level. I got Super Bowl. Yep. I got the gold mm -hmm. jacket. Yep. So, Skip, but I've always been mindful. When I'm talking about a man, I'm talking about somebody's son. I'm talking about somebody's brother, grandson, mm -hmm. husband, nephew. Okay, so you. I factor all that into the equation, and that's why I never make it personal. I talk about his performance. But in a situation like this, Lou, you dead ass wrong. Okay. And instead of saying, you know what, guys, I was Thank wrong. You. I made a mistake. You try to, oh, man, I just, I just okay. stopped by to get some wings. No, it's not okay. that. And, and you understand, you have a responsibility yes. to say that on television. Absolutely. You have a responsibility to me to say it yes. and to us to say it, to this show to say it. Anybody, my brother, mm -hmm. people ask, man, your brother, when he, if you hear him say something, that's 1,000% how he feels, and that's 1,000% that it happened. Mm -hmm. Anybody that knows, you go back to my college, mm -hmm. go back to anybody that, that's me. What you see is what you get. Skip, I, I, I'm old enough to be these guys' uncle. Some of them I'm old enough to be their dad. I got kids older than mm -hmm. some of these guys. What I look like going, going back and forth to a man who want to fight these guys? Bro, I said what I said. Mm -hmm. I felt that you was wrong. I ain't got anything personal against Lou, but I felt he was wrong in this situation given the circumstances. If this, Skip, if this was normal, let's just say he's on a road trip. He goes and he leaves and, they, and he misses a game because he's going to attend a funeral for a friend, father, and then all of a sudden he stops off at uh, Magic City. Skip, I, I, they got to do it. But this is extenuating circumstances. Yep. This is not a normal situation. Okay. And he's treating it like it's normal. Yep. And it's everything but normal. Okay. And again, 
what Perk tweeted and what he said on television was not out of bounds because he just basically said it's disturb disturbing when a rookie in right. Zion can act more mature than an NBA right. veteran. Well, he did. Right. Zion had some personal family right. issue, and he went and attended to it and came right back and sat for four, four days. He right? got four days. Okay. So, so if, if if they was so, why did he get four days and Lou got ten? Hmm. If, if if Lou behaved in a manner that was appropriate, or the NBA felt that was appropriate, why did he get an extra six days? Wings. All you get, Skip, that's the thing. Mm -hmm. If you're wrong, yep. just be mad enough to say I was wrong. I apologize. You, sh you should apologize to your teammates. Because Hope Skip, he did. they're there. Yep. They don't want to be they don't want to be there any more than Lou Williams wants to be there. Mm -hmm. They want to have a nice meal from their favorite restaurant you, just like you Lou got Williams. That. And most of them have defended, um, all of them has defended them, and they say he's our, uh, he's a true, like Zubat said, he's a true leader of this team. Well, he didn't act like it on Saturday. Guess what, Skip? You know? A leader can be wrong. Yep. Yep. Yeah, but the good leaders acknowledge their mistakes. Yes. So hopefully Lou, at least to his teammates, has had that conversation. But it doesn't look great when he's not owning it publicly, uh, in our opinion. No mercy. Well, according to reports, new Seahawks safety Jamal Adams tried his best to make his way from New York to Dallas when long-term contract talks fell through. Adams reportedly started to lobby Cowboys players to put pressure on Jerry Jones to make a deal happen. Jets general manager Joe Douglas was reportedly not happy upon hearing that Adams, what he was actually doing. So Douglas also became upset at the Cowboys when details of a potential deal were leaked by the Cowboys. Shannon, should the Cowboys have made this deal happen? No. It, didn't make any, it doesn't make any sense for me, Skip. Dak's not coming. To, if, if you sign this kid here and they're talking about you going to give him money and you got Dak Prescott, Skip, that's, that's your quarterback, that's, done, that's been a model citizen for you, mm -hmm. and you don't give him, I, I don't know how you make that. I don't know. And considering they had just given up a first-round pick, what, a year and a half ago for Amari, mm -hmm. and it was going to require two first-round picks, but Skip, what I don't like, I don't like players lobbying. Okay, if you don't want to be there, you don't want to be there. But when you go out there and you try to, hey, hey, bro, why don't y'all go talk to Jerry? Or why don't y'all go talk to uh, 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 John Harbaugh? Go talk to this guy to try to get me up. Bro, just go play. And if you don't want to be there, just hold out and say, look, you want to move? And I get you upset. Joe Douglas, it's been reported that Joe Douglas told him they're going to get the deal done. It didn't get done, and he grew, grew frustrated and wanted to get out. But I, I, don't, I don't like all this, this lobbying about, you know, come get me and, and all that other stuff. Um, but at the end of the day, Skip, I believe the Cowboys made the right decision. Um, I'm not giving up a two first um, for, for a safety. Um, Khalil Mack went for two ones. Mm. That's Khalil Mack. I'm not giving up two number ones for Jamal Adams. I think he's a very good safety. But I don't think, I think that was too steep of a price to pay, mm. even though now the Cowboys are going to say, look, could it have been doable, Skip? Sure, because if the Cowboys are what you believe and what a lot of people believe, they're going to be picking in the low 20s, uh, maybe who even know, maybe the 30s, because they're going to go get to the NFC Championship game or they're making the playoffs at least, getting to the NFC Championship game, who knows the Super Bowl. So those picks down there, but still, that's a steep, steep price to pay for. Mm. Okay, so to me, as a longtime Cowboy fan, here's the incredible irony of what's happened over the last couple of years. We have seen two high-pick safeties, both born and raised in the state of Texas, one in Dallas, mm -hmm. one went to the University of Texas. They have openly campaigned for the Cowboys to come and get me. Mm -hmm. Earl Thomas campaigned openly, come and get me. Remember, he chased Jason Garrett in 2017 the all tunnel. the way up the tunnel and grabbed him by the arm and said, come and get me, coach. I want to be here. Right. And now the irony was he wanted out of Seattle mm -hmm. and the other high pick safety, Jamal Adams, mm -hmm. campaigned to be a cowboy and wound up in Seattle. Right. I, I couldn't make this up. It, it's like the, <laughs> the craziest bit of, of sort of playing musical chairs between Dallas, Seattle, and the Jets. And this is the way it ended up. And here's my takeaway. The one who got away for me was Earl Thomas. Mm -hmm. That was the key move. That was a Super Bowl move that Jerry Jones failed to make. Do you remember what happened at the trade deadline? Mm -hmm. The story was, I'm just going by what was reported, that Jerry thought, it's, it's almost like the DAC deal, the DAC negotiation, mm -hmm. 
Jerry thought he had at least sort of a verbal handshake deal mm -hmm. with John Schneider, the GM Correct. of the Seattle Seahawks, Correct. for a third-round draft choice to acquire Earl Thomas. Well, well, obviously, a three is still a lot to pay for a guy you're going to have to you really have to pay. pay. Correct. Because when you land him, again, you secure his rights, you are going to have to pay right. the man his big right. money. And you understand that when you sign him. You, you know that. you trade for him, excuse okay, me. Okay, so how would it have changed life if, if we're going back two de trade deadlines yeah. ago, they had acquired Earl Thomas and paid Earl Thomas? Right. I don't know. He was the missing link for me right. because to this moment, the, the weakest part of this whole football team is at safety. Right. They got Ha Ha Clinton Dix, and that's got to be an upgrade. And we had Xavier Woods, as mm -hmm. you recall, on mm -hmm. the show. Mm -hmm. He's a fine young man and a pretty decent player, right. but they're not great. They're not loaded at right. safety. Mm -hmm. they, they don't have transcendent safety play. They're not impact players. They're, they're not impact players. Can you maybe get by with them? Maybe they've yeah. tried to get by with Jeff Heath for years and years. Now he's a Las Vegas Raider. Raider. But the point is, Jeff Heath was an overachiever who played as hard as he could, and he ran into people, and he made some plays downfield, but he was not Earl Thomas. Right. Earl pa Thomas is a difference maker. Mm -hmm. He is a sideline to sideline safety mm -hmm. with an incredible nose for the football that right. ranks right there with Tyron Matthew or right. anybody, Honey Badger, anybody right. you want right. to throw in there. He, he is Ed Reed-like. He doesn't have Ed Reed's physicality and impact. Right. But my point is, Baltimore paid the freight. Right. They paid the price, ultimately. And I don't know if Dallas could have even made that fit. What would have happened if they had signed Earl Thomas, you know, acquired and signed right. him? Then what would that do to your cap going right. forward? What would it do? No, do you, that means you would have signed Earl Thomas before you paid Amari Cooper. That is correct. And that means... And, and before Zeke. a lot of... Yeah. Yeah. Because actually, him and Zeke got money at the same time. So you can only pay one. Yep. And that means you just, well, you'd have had to pay, you'd have had to pay uh, uh, Earl Thomas because that means you signed him in you, free agency. You just have to pay so him. So you'd, you'd have had to sign him. safety money. Skip, I, 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 I just don't I, don't... I don't like all this. I don't like all this. this and I get it. Teams, you know, they trade players, but I don't like players, you know, going behind the scenes. And I, and I get it. Jamal Adams felt betrayed because he felt that he had gone to the general manager and the general manager had told him that he was going to get a deal. Skip, but something very similar happened to me. I remember when I signed uh, an extension with the Broncos, John Beek was the general manager. Okay, two, and he told me, he said, well, you're having a great season. I'm not going to have a problem coming back doing this deal, doing early if you continue to play like this. Well, New staff comes in. Skip, I'm new to the business. Mm. I'm thinking I'm still working with the same company. You tell me one thing, Skip, it's good for the next guy that comes in. Mm. No, Mike says, Shannon, you didn't have that deal with me. Mm. That, that No. I, so I'm like, all right. So, Skip, you know, I'm looking at I'm like, hold on. I done did, you know, back-to-back -back Pro Bowls. I'm all pro, 1,000 yards. But he said, he's like, but Shannon, but you didn't have that deal with me. Mm. Now, if you go do what you're supposed to do, I have no problem. But guess what happened, Skip? I did what I was supposed to do, and he still tried to trade me in the offseason. Okay. I come back in in 96, and I'm looking, I'm like, well, Mike. He said, well, it's 84. I was, I'm trying to make, my job is to make the team better. Skip, I looked him dead in his eye. He's sitting across from me. I looked him dead in his eye. I said, Mike, I ain't got no problem with you trying to trade me. I said, but the problem that I have is that you think you could find somebody that was better than I was. I said, but I'm going to show you what I'm about. Mm. I go out, drop a grand. 1,060 double is your touchdown. Mm. He's like, okay. And that was the end of that. That's the, that's, but Skip, that's the way I approached it. Right. I, don't get, I don't get upset. I, I thought I had a deal. I thought it was good for the company, but it was just good between me and the previous general manager. It wasn't good between me yep. and Mike. Okay, okay, I get that. Okay, so back to Jamal Adams. I've made it clear from the start. I'm out on Jamal Adams. Right. I think he's more trouble than he's worth, but but he's he's worth a lot because he is. Oh, he can play. He, he can really play. Yeah, he can play. He now. can ball. Yeah, he is impactful. Right. But the problem is he's impactful off the field too. He's right. impactful on social media, and now Seattle thinks it can get away with not paying him yet. They've they've said just what the Jets have said. We're going to push this back to 2021. Right. This negotiation. Right. We'll pay you next year. Right. And he's going to sit still for that, as, as big a force as he is on social media. He will not be a happy camper. Well, Skip, if he if he's as impactful for the Seahawks 
as he was for the Jets, and because we've seen a lot of guys get be impactful for losing teams. Yep. That don't show me nothing. True. Now you're in a situation where the expectation, you're going to have a lot of eyeballs. Yep. In Seattle it, with Russell. If he can be as impactful for Seattle mm -hmm. as he was for the Jets, Skip, they, 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 they're going to be on to something. Okay. They can be a major player. So Joe Douglas was upset reportedly with the Cowboys because when they did go back and forth at the trade deadline about Jamal Adams, right. that Dallas leaked it, that maybe Steven or Jerry mentioned to some reporter, and it got out that they were talking about trading Jamal Adams, which Joe Douglas believed made him even unhappier. Yeah, of course. Like, like all of a sudden, because, oh, you don't love me? Skip, remember, he said they don't mention trading Aaron, Aaron Donald. That's what he said. They yeah. don't, they, you know, they don't trade these good, you Tom know. Brady, yeah, right. right, right. And so, he, yeah. yeah, he was upset about that. But, I mean, but I think the thing was he could have gotten over that had they come to him and says, okay, Jamal, Here's the extension. He wants, I think Eddie Jackson is the highest paid at 14.6, 14 14.5 14 million. Yep. He wants something comparable. That he wants to jump over that. He does. Uh, and I believe that had the Jets made it, but the Jets ain't spent a whole lot of money. Maybe the Jets should turn around to them two draft picks and spend one of them mm. and go get Ngakwe mm. from Jacksonville. Okay, they could do that. Well, I just want to make it clear, I have regrets about Earl Thomas right. because he's a Super Bowl piece. I have no, no regrets, regrets about Jamal Adams. Okay. Thank you. No mercy. The Clippers will be without Lou Williams for their first game back against the Lakers on Thursday night. Now that Williams will need to finish his quarantine, Montrez Harrell and Patrick Beverly are two other players who have left the bubble for excused absences within the last week. And the Clippers have also been without Zubats and Shamit. Fox Sports NBA analyst Chris Broussard is now joining us. Chris, how much trouble are the Clippers in? Skip, listen up. <laughs> well, I, look, I, I'm going to be in the rare position where I probably end up agreeing with Skip uh, on this topic, but I've picked the Clippers to win it. I still feel good about my pick. I think they're the deeper team. They're clearly the deeper team. There's no doubt about that, especially with Avery Bradley and Rajon Rondo out, at least Rondo for the time being. And I think they're the better team. Uh, I think they're better defensively. I think they're a better overall team, even though the Lakers have two of the best three players in the series. That said, there's no question that I've liked the Lakers' attitude thus far much better than the Clippers. LeBron is clearly dialed in. He clearly stayed in shape, you know, during the, the lockdown. And uh, he's looked good. I like they, they seem to be all business very serious, and I definitely like their attitude. The Clippers, on the other hand, I, I got to admit, it's giving me a little bit of pause by, I think, I don't think they're taking this quite as seriously as they need to. Um, Patrick Beverly and Montrezl Harrell have departed. Now, maybe there were issues, or maybe they were, you know, some guys want to get out there and, and see some women or whatever, you know, away from the bubble early on. So I don't know if some of that is happening, but I, I'm just questioning that. I'm wondering about it. And then with Lou Williams, of course, going to Magic City, nobody's making moral judgments on Lou Williams' decision. It's just that, obviously, it's easier to catch COVID <laughs> in a nightclub than it is if you, you go to Starbucks or something like that. So that shows me that Lou, a veteran, a leader on this team, didn't seem to have the proper attitude and mindset. So things like that make me concerned a little bit. I still got them picked, but that does concern me. And I think some of it, it is this, guys. The Clippers throughout this whole season have been great with players going in and out of the lineup. Kawhi missed 13 games. Paul George missed 22 games. Patrick Beverly missed 16 games. Landry Shamit missed 17 games. And they haven't missed a beat. When they've dropped Kawhi back into the lineup or taken him out, they've still played well. There's been no issues. They beat the Lakers two out of three times with that. I think that has created maybe a little bit of complacency or perhaps even overconfidence that they can just drop guys in and out of the lineup, turn it on and off when they like, and that's not the mentality that they need to have because the four guys I mentioned – Kawhi, Paul, uh, Beverly, and Shamit, they all understand their role. Kawhi and George are the stars. Beverly's a defender and, a, and an instigator. And Shamit is a shooter. Now you got other guys, though. Reggie Jackson, 
Marcus Morris, do they understand their roles? Because Morris might want to shoot too much. And same with Reggie. And so there, it's going to take you a little more time to work those guys in. So, again, I've still got the Clippers, but there's no question that I don't think they've approached this thing with the professionalism yet that the Lakers have. Go ahead. Go ahead, Skip. You want me to go? Yeah, I want you to go. <laughs> Chris Broussard, I don't got the Clippers anymore. <laughs> Not now. Wow. I am now all wow. in on LeBron's Lakers because LeBron is all in on the bubble mentality. This is all about sacrifice. It's about almost like college rah-rah unity, and LeBron is leading the charge in that regard. I was disappointed he didn't play yesterday. I still don't quite understand it after my man Shannon thought that LeBron might play all four quarters to get himself in peak physical condition for this, this sprint to the finish line. But to your point, the Clippers are at the bottom of the league in unity right now because they are all out. We, we've had five players miss long stretches of the bubble, and it may be for personal reasons. It may be for family reasons. I don't know. It just doesn't feel or smell right to me because the bubble was all about getting back into the flow and the Clippers of any team, of all the teams in the league who are in the bubble right now, needed reps. They needed to get to know each other because they still don't know each other to all of your points that you made, Chris. This team's full roster was together a total of 12 games in what was the regular season. They went 11 and one, to your point. They can be really good at just throwing it together on the fly. But I don't think it's going to fly now in this eight, these eight seeding games. They just gave them up because I'm convinced that the personal reasons that Montrez and Lou and Pat Bev and others, Shamit, Zoo, uh, the, their personal reasons were they just didn't want to have to be cooped up in the bubble for that long. They said... Heck with the eight seeding games. We're not going to catch the Lakers anyway. We're five and a half back. Well, looking over their shoulder, here comes maybe Denver. Here comes maybe Utah. Here comes Oklahoma City. And we'll mess up their number two seed. Well, I just don't love it because the bubble is all about sacrifice and reuniting as a team. And LeBron got that in ways that nobody on the Clippers seems to get it, maybe except Doc. And I'm sure Doc is is pulling his hair out over this, especially off the Lou Williams episode, because I do consider Lou, of everyone on the team, he, he may be the team leader of that team. Maybe beyond Kawhi. Kawhi's not a natural-born leader. He leads by example. I don't think Paul's that, that, that much of a, of a leader of a whole franchise and basketball team. I think they look to Lou. And Lou looked to Magic City. And, and th that's it. I, I'm just telling you, maybe they'll slowly get it back together. Maybe I'll change my stance on this. But it feels like they are all out. So I am all out on the Clippers. Thank you very much. And he found what he was looking for at Magic City, too, yeah. <laughs> Chris. <laughs> I, I, but for me, I like the way the Lakers were playing before the season stopped a little better than I like the way the Clippers. Now, there's no question that the Clippers are the deeper team. They go, basically, they legitimately go 10 deep. And they can intermix these guys. And you see, as you mentioned, Chris, it doesn't matter who's playing or how much they're playing. Guys seem to know their role for the most part, and they come in and do a great job. But I just think in a situation like this, Skip, uh, uh, Chris, is that it's not so much, because I don't believe they can catch the Lakers. The Lakers would need to go like 2-6, and six and, and they would need to go 8-0 and oh in order for them to catch the Lakers, and I don't believe that's going to happen. But now all of a sudden, you lose the three seed. Now you go from playing, what happens if you go 3-6, and the Rockets are the six seed. James Harden is going to be a nightmare. He and, and uh, Russ can cause you problems, and we've seen them cause the Clippers problems this year. So you don't want you want to go seven games with them in, in, in the start, the first round with the Clippers and the Rockets? I'd like to see that matchup. Because I'm counting on James Harden going to get me 40 a night mm. on, on the best defensive, on the two greatest wing defenders since Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan. And James Harden don't have a problem with him. He gets 40 a night. And then when he has an off night, Russ go get him 40. Mm. So I would like to see that. But I just think, and I agree with what, 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 what both of you guys are saying. 
the Lakers' mindset seemed to be, guys, we're down here, this is a business trip. And you hear this, this talk a lot, skipping football. Guys, we're going there for business. We're not going to the mall. We're not going to hang out or anything. This is a business trip. They're going down there for a three-month business okay, trip. But that's a long business trip. Yeah, that's long, a, long. Yeah, 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 yeah. LeBron, LeBron, he packed like 17 suitcases because he knew he was going to be there the whole while. The all three months, the Lakers are going to be there. So they say, look, make sure you bring your best. Uh, P.J. Tucker packed all them shoes. I don't know why he packed them. He needs to send them back because they're going to be gone a couple of Mm. Hopefully they just get past that first round because they're going to be the six seed, Skip uh, and Chris, and they're going to get your Clippers. The Clippers going to lose that two seed. You watch what I tell you, uh, uh, Chris Broussard, and I'm going to be right here. I'm for all James Harden giving them 40 a night. Mm. <laughs> Look, I think they would beat the Rockets, but you're right. Why Why face the Rockets in the first round? <laughs> you don't have you to. You don't want to do that because they're going to, even if you beat them, Russ is just going to put the intensity on you. And it's going to be a tougher matchup than you want in that first round. Look, I, I think, guys, this is where Doc Rivers has to step up. Doc Rivers has been regarded as one of the best coaches and leaders in the league for years, right? And he obviously did it with Boston. He found a way to bring Garnett, Ray Allen, and Paul Pierce all together, and even Rondo, to work together and win a championship mm -hmm. He didn't do a good job with Chris Paul, Blake Griffin, DeAndre Jordan. Remember, it was personalities and, and differences and things mm -hmm. in the locker room that tore that team apart and kept them from maximizing their potential. Doc's got to step up and get it done. Yep. This is where the reason the Lakers have the right mindset is because LeBron has been a great leader there and gotten everybody in the right mindset. And I'm sure he was a great leader throughout the, the shutdown. Right. Doc has to do that. If this is a this is kind of a sign of is this disrespect for Doc that all these guys are breaking out and you know going yeah. out for personal reasons and right. all that? He's got to get things under control if he wants to give this team the chance to win the championship. You know, a lot of times, you know, what happened, Phil Jackson would always say, "Guys, they'll figure it out. We'll let them figure it out." Well, in a situation like oh, this, yes. you can't figure this out. Mm -mm. You better put your foot down. And Doc says, okay, this is what it's going to be. This is how it has to be in order, us for, in order for us to get to where we need to be. And, and remember, the Clippers don't have a Michael Jordan run in the locker room. No. There, there's not that guy. Because their best player really doesn't say a whole lot. Mm -hmm. Michael Jordan had no problem voicing his opinion. Kobe Bryant has no point, had, had no problem voicing his point of view. LeBron had no... This, this, uh, the Clippers locker room, their best player is going to show you, go lead by example. And the other guy's like, okay, well, we, we, we see what you're doing, but we try to go over here and, and get some chicken wings. Mm. So, so, but Chris, we have one last hope here. My man up across the table, my partner, Shannon Sharp, has been bubbling over all morning about Dion Waiters and J.R. Smith. And he's also mentioned how hot Kyle Kuzma has been. And then Kyle, for whatever reason, had some injury knickknack that he sat out yesterday with. But now LeBron James, in the biggest games of this season, is going to have to trust rotation players named Dion Waiters, who he's had issues with dating back to their days in Cleveland when he aggravated LeBron reportedly because he didn't play the right way and ball hogged on offense. And J.R. Smith, we know that J.R. created the ultimate blunder, and, and it was LeBron's lowest moment, you could argue, of his career in game one at Golden State a couple of years ago, as you recall. And then that, that leaves us Kyle Kuzma, who I think also drives LeBron crazy on occasion because he can go crazy hot or crazy cold on offense and on defense. So three big X factors LeBron James doesn't completely trust he's going to have to depend on down the stretch of what's left of this season. That, that's a factor, Skip. And, and look, I, I have said, even before they signed JR, that it won't surprise me. I, I even expect him to maybe hit a big shot here or there. Not a game winner, but a, a shot here or there to change momentum yep. or to start a run or whatever it is for the Lakers. Here this, here's the thing, though. If I'm the Lakers, I do not want to be in a position where I'm counting on JR or Dion. It, whatever they give me has to be gravy. It has to be extra. It has to be icing on the cake. They can't be the cake. They can't be part of the substance where I really need JR to step up and have a great game tonight. No. If he does, wow, surprising. That was great. That helped us.
But I, I don't want to be in a position where I'm counting on Jr. And, and Kyle, him scoring, you know, look, I, I like Kyle Kuzma a lot, but him, you know, having these hot nights, maybe that goes to his head a little bit too. So <laughs> those are things you got to watch for with the Lakers. Mm. I just think the biggest thing is Kuz needs to understand whether he's scoring or not, he's going to have to do other things because we can't count on him to give us 25, but he might need to give us 10 rebounds. He might need to play defense a lot better than what he's played. So, yeah, those 25 would be good. If Kuzma gave us 25, nobody's beating us. We, we go and we, like Moses Malone was rest this old fo fo fo. Everybody getting swept up out of there. Mm. No mercy. Well, Giannis Antetokounmpo has been favored most of the season to win back-to-back -back MVPs. LeBron has made his case for the award. The King said, quote, as far as the MVP race, I showed what I'm capable of doing, not only individually, but from a team perspective, us being number one in the West. LeBron also said that he silenced a lot of critics who had questioned how he would perform if he ever left the Eastern Conference for the Western Conference. Chris Broussard still with us. So, Chris, does LeBron have a point about East First West. Well, first, guys, I turned in my MVP or my awards ballot for all the regular season awards yesterday, and I did have Giannis as my MVP, and I think he's going to win going away. I had LeBron second. Um, look, LeBron has been tremendous. There is no question about it, but you don't grade the MVP on a curve. So him being in his 17th year doesn't matter, okay? It, I'm not looking at years in the league. I think Giannis was just the MVP. As far as the East-West stuff, this is revisionist history, okay? When people talked about LeBron being in the easier Eastern Conference, it had nothing to do with MVP. In fact, he won his four MVPs while playing in the East. He won four MVPs in five years while playing in the East. So nobody mentioned he can't be the MVP because he's in the East. The criticism of being in the East was about reaching the finals. Would LeBron have been able to reach the finals eight straight years had he been in the West? Obviously, the answer is no, because he didn't win all those championships and beat the Western team. So that was where the criticism was. It had absolutely nothing to do with the MVP voting. The reason LeBron never won MVP his second go-round in Cleveland in those last four years, because they coasted through the regular season. They were clearly the best team in the conference every single year, and they never won 60 games. They won 57 games once. They were only the number one seed one time during that those four years LeBron was with Cleveland his second go-round. We know we saw the drama. There were trades. There was, you know, all types of, of, of stuff going on. And LeBron was coasting, playing well, but coasting. And then they turned it on in the playoffs and ran through everybody in the East. So, that's why he didn't win the MVP, because nobody's going to give you the MVP award when you kind of coast through the regular season. And so this is revisionist history. I had absolutely nothing to do with MVP award, the East was discussed. Well, I'm just, uh, but they did say, it's been said, well, well how, did they, how did they get dubbed the least in conference? Where did that term come from? Have you, I just want to know, what, yes or no, if that's, that's a simple yes or no. Have you ever heard it called the least in conference, yes or no? Wait, it, I, it, I, I, it, said it. I said it. I, don't, you, I, I, I invented it. I'm talking I to Chris. I'm talking to Chris. I coined I'm it. I'm talking to yes, Chris. Yes, you've heard it. <laughs> I'm talking to Chris. I'm sorry. Yes. Chris, I'm right. sorry. Have you ever heard that term before? Yes, but Shannon, yes. you got, will you admit, it was never in reference to the MVP race. It was always about reaching the finals. Yes, I Is believe, that you have to admit that, right? They they said that had any of the great players, be it Kobe, be it Shaq, or any of the great players, Kevin Durant, had they been in the Eastern Conference at that time, they would have gone to eight straight finals. Although I disagree with that, that's what they were saying. Because remember, you do remember, like when LeBron went to his last finals, the team that he beat, they called them the Baby Celtics. That was a team that beat the brakes off of Giannis. Do we forget that? That happened. Now, did that happen? Chris Broussard, did that happen? Was that the team, the baby Celtics? Giannis was a pup. Oh, now he a pup. 
<laughs> Boy, you think, you don't know, been around Christmas, huh? You don't been around Skip Bayless so long. I keep it real. You know that shit. I keep it real. That was the exact. That was the exact same thing that Skip Bayless said about the Thunder. He called them the baby Thunder they were. to diminish what Goat James had done to him. And you just called him the Puff Celtic to not to try to hype Giannis, but diminish LeBron. You know what, Chris, son, I'm done with you. Mm -hmm. I believe LeBron should be the... I agree, though. I believe LeBron should be the MVP, but you're voting. You're probably right. You have the pulse of this. I, be I do believe Giannis is going to be the MVP, though. But I think LeBron should win it. All I would like to say is I am not going to let LeBron James get away with gloating about how I'm now, now dominating the West. Dominating! As opposed to what they used to say I couldn't do in the East what, what, or in the West what I was doing for those years in the East. Baloney, LeBron. I'm sorry I'm not buying it. What happened in LeBron's first year in the West? He played 55 games and he went 28 and 27 because he didn't have a co-star right. who is also an MVP candidate. Anthony Davis has had an extraordinary year alongside an extraordinary bounce back year for LeBron. But the first year in L.A., LeBron missed the playoffs and was known more for his blooper reel. And no, I'm not going to call for it right now because we don't have time to go through <laughs> all the comedy that ensued when LeBron just lost interest in playing with the baby Lakers yeah. a year ago. Yeah, what about the baby okay. Lakers, Chris? Yeah, okay, so now what happened? We fast forward to this year. What happened to Golden State? The dynasty became the worst team in all of basketball. What happened to my Spurs this year? They are now ancient history as it pertains to Duncan and Ginobili and Parker. That, those days are long gone. What happened to the Clippers this year? As I just pointed out in the previous segment, only 11 times did they have their full roster together, so they were no real threat to the Lakers in the Western Conference. All of a sudden, we see the East rivaling the West this year because... Portland had the injuries to Nurkic and, and Zach Collins. And, and Utah, uh, again, it, they, they just underachieved. They never took off. Denver never took off the way they did a year ago. And I look down the list and I say, well, there were the baby Pelicans, but Zion barely played so far. So where are the threats in the West? I don't see them. And by the way, who did LeBron constantly sun as a member of the the, what did we call them, the, the, the raptors? What did you call them, the baby, the baby dinosaurs? dinosaurs? Okay, there's another baby dinosaur. <laughs> DeMar DeRozan got sunned by LeBron in every playoff series they ever played. He's now in the Western Conference trying to lead my Spurs. And what, what happened to Paul George, the guy that LeBron used to toy with in playoff series when he was the leader of the Pacers? He is now in the Western Conference. So all of a sudden I say, what's the big deal about what LeBron is doing with a co-MVP candidate in Anthony Davis in the West? He should be doing what he's doing, and it has nothing to do with conferences. Skip, Skip makes great points. Look, the top of the West, outside of the two L.A. teams, the top of the East is as good as the top of the West. I mean, you got Milwaukee. You, Toronto is very legit. Philadelphia, yeah. even though they're, what, the fifth, sixty, we know how much talent they have. Miami, don't sleep on Miami. And, of course, we know about Boston. So the East has gotten better. Here's the other thing. We, we all know, I think only a fool would try to say LeBron is not the Lakers' best player, okay? We clearly know that. But if you look at their stats, Anthony Davis leads the Lakers in everything except assist. Everything. And so this MVP, look, LeBron's been great, but Giannis hasn't beat in the regular season or in the uh, regular stats of points and rebounds. And he still gives you six assists a game, field goal percentage. He's got him beat in the analytics stats. PER better than, it's the seventh best we've ever seen. His team has the best record in the league without the second superstar to Skip's point that LeBron has. And he might be defensive player of the year. He's better on both ends. This is nothing against LeBron, but Man, Giannis stop. is clearly the MVP. This is the same formula, Skip, or uh, Shannon, that LeBron had when he won it his first two years in Cleveland in 09 and 2010. He had the best record in the league. They won 66 and 61 games. 
and he had no second star. So everybody like LeBron's doing. What you mean no himself. second star? He had no star. Mo Williams. Okay, Mo Williams made All Star team, kind of like Chris Middleton makes All Star teams now because of their record. But that was the same formula that got LeBron a couple of MVPs. So now we're supposed to hold it against Giannis? Come on. Man, Giannis, look, mm. Giannis had an unbelievable season. But the thing is with LeBron, LeBron is not asked to rebound. He has Anthony Davis. He has Dwight. He has JaVale. Do, do I believe LeBron, had LeBron been asked to give you double-digit rebounds this year? Yeah, I believe he could have done it. But I think what he needed was to facilitate. He needed to make sure Anthony Davis, look, A.D., I'm getting you right because we're building this thing for the playoffs. Because, like, I look, I know what I'm going to get from. I know what I'm going to get from LeBron. I just need to make sure Anthony Davis knows this is the stage that he wanted. He signed with Rich Paul to get him to L.A. for these type games. Now, we finna show you what we bought, Chris. No, that's all right. You can have that award. Mm -hmm. You can have the regular season MVP, <laughs> but I guarantee you we're going to be finals MVP. Mm -hmm. And then what? Mm -hmm. You just guaranteed finals MVP? Finals MVP. Whew. Did we get that on tape? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Finals MV. All right, we heard it here first. Shannon, the confidence. I just feel it from all the way over here. You're just grinning over there. Uh, cannot wait for Thursday. Chris, so good to have you. I know you'll be excited about Thursday as well. We'll check in with you very soon. No mercy. 50 NFL coaches and execs ranked quarterbacks by tiers, and Tom Brady failed to make tier one, dropping down to tier two. One exec said Brady now looks skittish in the pocket, while an offensive coach said Brady's arm strength has diminished and his accuracy is also slipping. Shannon, did you somehow sabotage this list? Do I even need to ask you, did they get it right? Hmm. What that is that exact yeah. <laughs> Now, I've been trying to tell you this for a better part of a year. The exact, everything, the, everything. Mm -hmm. I ain't no exec. I've mm -hmm. never put together a team. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to draft. I don't know what, you know, what the price is. If I were to trade a player, I don't got none of that. But that guy said exactly what I've been saying for a year and a half, Jenny. Mm -hmm. Verbatim. Mm -hmm. He said, this is what the exec said. He's cautious. He's a little more skittish in the pocket. He doesn't want to take a hit. Wait, what's the next line? Whoa, 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 Wait, whoa, what's whoa, the whoa, next whoa, line? Whoa. You got to read it. Whoa, whoa. I think the arm is still there. Shannon Sharp said he's a rag on. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, There's yes. another offensive play uh, called there. I think the arm strength is diminished. Okay, but if then, then whoa, another whoa, whoa, defensive whoa, coordinator whoa, says, whoa, I still think he should be whoa, in the top whoa, tier. Whoa, 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 Jenny. I could have sworn you said Shannon. <laughs> I could have sworn you said it was my turn. <laughs> I thought she said it was my turn. No, it was your turn. It's not your turn yet. It's my turn. I think his arm strength is diminished, and if you're around football a lot, you notice his ball placement is slipping a bit. Mm. <laughs> yeah, of course he dropped off. And I've been trying to tell you this for the longer, but you don't want to hear this from me. Mm. But I tell you who's in tier one. I got it. You told me that. Oh, if you look at the last four years, he slipped. Mm. Everybody that keeps evaluating this, these guys, what do they keep putting him? Mm. All I know is the guy that's up in Lambeau mm. is in the tier one. Mm. He's the third quarterback. We'll talk about him in just a minute. <laughs> Let's talk about Tom Brady, shall we? When I read this last night, I got five legitimate LOLs out of this. This was nothing but pure comedy. They should read these quotes at the Laugh Factory, and Will Ferrell should play Tom Brady in this movie because this is nothing but a joke of a movie that they made last night for The Athletic. Uh -huh. My problem is that these are some of the same evaluators. Do you know how bad this league is at picking quarterbacks? Yeah. You know, these were some of their predecessors were were all in power when Tom Brady fell all the way into the sixth round. It happens, and he too. became the GOAT. Every draft, I tell you going in, you watch. They'll pick six, seven quarterbacks in the first round, and three of them will be swings and misses yes. every year. Yes. I believe Justin Herbert will be a swing and a miss. This time, you agree with me. Right. But I've said quarterbacks before where you didn't agree with me, and they weren't any good. Sometimes I think my track record going into drafts is better than a lot of these guys who manage to keep their job swinging and missing on quarterbacks. Mm -hmm. Do I need to explain to these gentlemen that last year Tom Brady had the single worst receiving core in all of football? Mm -hmm. Pro Football Focused ranked the Patriot receiving core dead last in separation. Is that not the key element to receiving the football? 
to catching the football, you first have to separate from the man who's covering you. Yeah. They were ranked dead last in separation because there was no Gronk. There was at tight end a 39-year-old Benjamin Watson, who's who once upon a time was a very good player, but he wasn't last year for Tom Brady because Tom's number one receiver last year was a broken down, beat up Julian Edelman who led the league in dropped passes. The truth is, if these guys actually watched the tape and broke it down and stepped back and said, what was he working with? What do I always say? Tom Brady does the most with the least. Mm -hmm. Last year, he set the all-time record for doing the most in his 20-year career with the least he had to work with. He had the worst supporting cast of his 20 years in New England, and he lifted that junk that junk, oh, all, junk now. all the way to the two seed. It's junk now. They were in position. Not able to the three seed. He, no, the two seed. <laughs> he drove them down the field, 60 yards for a touchdown in the home finale against the rival Dolphins, who were starting to come to life at the end of the year. He drove them for the touchdown that gave them not a three-point lead, but a four-point lead, 24 to 20. And what did Bill Belichick's defense do? And I still can't believe you are giving Belichick a pass for this. They gave up a 75-yard 13-play drive in the last three minutes to the final gun, a five-yard touchdown pass from, wait, Ryan Fitzpatrick to Mike Gusecki? And it knocked the Patriots at 27 to 24 out of the two seed. And put them in the playoffs? Made them, made them play the first week of okay. the playoffs. The first week. They yeah. could have had two weeks off that they desperately needed, and it would have changed the seeding and changed their opposition. They were not They going. ran into the hottest team, a Tennessee Titans no, team. The hottest yep. team with the Kansas City no. Chiefs. You see what you did, Skip Bayless? And this is what happened. And this is why it's so hard and most difficult mm. to critique Tom Brady. Mm. Because when he plays bad, it's always someone else's fault. So in other words, if he had this least supporting cast this year, when he had a great supporting cast, why wouldn't you and others give those guys credit that mm. they deserve? Mm. It was all about Tom Brady. And now that he can't elevate, mm. oh, he tell, 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 uh, mm. Julian Edelman dropped the ball. Benjamin Watson can't run. And this one, Nikhil Harry is a disappointment. Well, he didn't even play for eight games, well, and then he was well, a disappointment. Well, 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 well. All I'm saying is, Skip, is that you have to be fair in your evaluation. If these guys aren't any good when Tom Brady is playing well, don't give mm. Tom Brady credit. Mm. Because that's what you do when the guy, oh, Julian Edelman, Amendola never got credit. Chris Hogan never got credit. They're it's just because guys. you never gave them any. Uh, that's not true. Mm. That is not true, and I've tried to tell you that. I said, Skip, what you try to do is because it's not Julio, it's not D-Hop, you don't want to give these guys credit. I say, but for that system, they are perfect. Oh, no, no. Can you imagine if Tom Brady... Now, all of a sudden, all I'm saying is that everything that I've said, these execs are saying it. Mm. See, what you try and do, when they look at their track record, okay, but when they hit it out the park, mm. you don't say look at their track record? Mm. Well, all I know is that Tom Brady took all these quotes and he put them on his little bulletin board at home. So when he wakes up in his bedroom, he looks at his little bulletin board and says, aha, aha. You, 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 and you. I'm coming for you today and tomorrow and the Skip. next day. Because he just went from the worst supporting cast in football to the best. He Again, Pro Football Focus ranks Tampa Bay's receivers number one in pro football. They have two Pro Bowl wideouts. They now have Rob Gronkowski on top of those wideouts, on top of O.J. Howard, on top of Cameron Brait. This is loaded. This is 40 Skip. touchdown passes waiting to happen. Let me ask you a question, Skip. You know who Bob Baffert is, right? Mm -hmm. How many Triple Crown winners have you trained? Two, American Pharaoh and Justify. Mm -hmm. how, many quarter, how many thoroughbreds do you think he's trained in his life? A thousand. So okay. in other words, just because you miss a few times, if you get a few right, you knock it out the park. Mm. So in other words, the guy that drafted Tom Brady, okay, that wasn't his own, but that's all he needs. But that, time out. Horses are way harder to predict than humans. No, they're way not. No, they're harder. not. Yes, they no, are. Not. First thing I learned in covering horse racing is don't bet the ponies because you cannot predict them. They're animals. Skip, this is what they say in horse racing. Mm -hmm. And I've talked, you know, it's funny, Skip. 
I was at a Kentucky Derby about four years ago, and I talked to Bob Baffert. Mm -hmm. He said, what we tried to do, we tried to breed the best to the best and hope for the best. Well, in the, when you mm -hmm. go pick a player, what you try to do, you try to watch what he did on mm -hmm. tape. You try to get him in a situation at the combine, and then you try to evaluate that, and you hope you got something. Mm. Sometimes you win, sometimes you lose. Mm. Okay, that's how it works, Skip mm. Bayless. So, but you, what you try to do, oh, these guys, when they start to criticize Tom Brady, let's go back and look at their track record. Let's see how many times. No, I'm not going to let you do that, Skip mm -hmm. Bayless. Yep, I'm not going to let you do no, that. No, you're not. I just <laughs> did it. And <laughs> I can't wait for this season to start and to, uh -uh. to watch you every Monday have to sit over there and stew over what Tom Brady just did to somebody else. Yes, but you know he's what? He's got weapons. But I'm and he's still got arms. I'm going to watch you come in here and all of a sudden Mike Evans can't play. All of a sudden Chris Godwin isn't any good. Who evaluated these guys? And all of a sudden O.J. Howard. Now I see why he was in Bruce Arians doghouse. Mm. Every excuse will come out of the book. I have no excuses. I'm on record. They are the best receiving core in pro football and I will need no excuses because Tom Brady's going to throw 40 touchdowns. They're still not going to win the division. Yes, they will. Nope. No mercy. So, guys, Aaron Rodgers received some mixed reviews in the athletics polling of coaches and execs. One defensive coach in the NFC North said, quote, I don't want to bleep with that guy. You can say what you want, but when you go into a game, that is the first guy you are preparing for. On the flip side, another coach said Rodgers is, quote, not the same guy he was the last 10 years. Overall, Rodgers still came in third overall on the list behind Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson. So, Shannon, should Rodgers still be ranked <laughs> third overall? Stop smiling over there. He's still, mm. He's still that guy, Skip. Mm. He's still the guy. What guy? That ain't that guy yeah. that you know. Mm. Hold on, so let me get it straight. I got no problem. Mahomes, Russ, no problem whatsoever. But I've been trying to tell you mm. for the last couple of years, Skip, he's still that dude. Mm. But you don't want to hear that. Mm. You fight me two through me or Tom Brady. Skip, here's the thing. He gets a new coach come in, and they make a commitment to running the football. So he's not asked to put the ball in harm's way 40 times a game, even though he doesn't put the ball in harm's way. Everybody knows mm. that 4-1 to one touchdown to interception ratio is far and away the best in, the mm. in NFL history. Mm. And so he's not asked to throw the ball 40 times a game. They rely on Aaron Jones. They, allow, uh, uh, they rely on the run game a lot more than they have in years past. Mm. And he's still that guy. So let me explain. Here's Air people at home. And I don't normally address my camera, mm. but I want to address it just for this for just a second. Mm. Aaron Rodgers declined. They've only been two seasons in NFL history in which a quarterback has thrown for more than 4,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, and less than five interceptions. Mm. Aaron Rodgers has those two seasons in 2018 and 2019, mm. and he stepped off a cliff. Mm. Let that sink in. The NFL's been playing football now about to be 101 years, and only twice mm. in NFL history, in Aaron Rodgers' declining years, mm -hmm. he did that. Mm. Can you imagine if he mm. wasn't declining? Tell me when it's my it's turn. It's not your turn mm. just yet. So just imagine, Skip Baylor, mm. it, his second year, they say the first year is, ooh, you know, you feel out year in that system. Mm. That second year, he's going to be even better. Really? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Interesting. So, I read these quotes, and I got a couple of LOLs out of these, but there are other <laughs> quotes that, that balance them out because one of these anonymous execs said, he has clearly lost something in his game. He still has wow moments, I'll give you that, but he is not the same guy he was over the last 10 years. So I keep trying to explain to you, and by the way, this piece goes on to say, there has been statistical decline. Well, I can just shoot big old holes in the sure. statute. 2019 season, his QBR, which encompasses every bit of what a quarterback does with his arm and his legs, his QBR fell to 54, which was the lowest of his career. It ranked 18th in the National Football League because his completion percentage which is a key factor, ranked 21st in the National Football League. And do you realize that just recently, Pro Football Focus dropped Aaron Rodgers out of its top 50 players? Yeah. Top 50? I wouldn't even go that far, but its rationale was this. While Deshaun Watson's star is on the rise, they included Deshaun in the top 50, 
Rodgers has become ever more evidently part of the problem in Green Bay, and his own team spent the offseason laying plans to minimize his role in 2020 and replace him beyond that. See Jordan Love trading up to take him in the first round. 13 3, he's part of the problem. Rodgers finished the regular season as the number nine ranked quarterback. That would not put him in the top tier of the athletics rankings. And yet, he was just 17th, ranked 17th from week eight onwards, says Pro Football Focus, which I will take to my bank. Thank you very much. The, the, the one quote that you refer to is a defensive coach with some NFC North experience. Well, was it eight years ago, 10 years ago? No, 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 well, well, seriously, how long ago was it? Because Aaron Rodgers is living on reputation. You always talk about expectation. I'm talking about rep. Reputation. Nobody, reputation. Hold, 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 mm. Nobody mm. has lived on more reputation than oh. Tom Brady. Because anytime you try to critique him, he's six. He's with the nine Super Bowl. He's won six with six game winning drives. So that's all you throw up. But what did those six game winning drives have to do with last year? Well, it was just two years ago he won the Super Bowl. Well, what, what have you done for me lately? <laughs> well, he did that. Mm -mm. Last year he had him in a position to be the two seed with nobody around him. Skip. All I'm saying is this, is that my guy is on top of your guy. Your guy's tier two now. Okay, your something. guy's ranked third, according to this. My guy oh. fell all the way to six. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Oh, wow. I'm, I'm oh, oh, devastated. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. Tier one. How many guys are in tier one? Five. Okay. Is, one, is your guy one of those five? He dropped barely okay, out of tier no, one. Bear, how, you keep, see, you keep saying barely. They, it might be he might well, be. football focus doesn't even have him in the top 50. So, so how is he the third-ranked quarterback uh, on reputation? Do these guys watch the tape? They just hear and see. They see some highlights. First of all, you know, first of all, the highlight shows. Oh, oh all, he's still that first guy. First of all, pro football focus got Matthew Stafford ranked high. Mm. And all Matthew Stafford does is throw for a bunch of yards. Mm. He, he a lot played. of people think he's going to be the comeback player of the year. Well, he should. Well, he should be. Well, he got a lot to come back from because mm. he's been in the league and they won Jack. Mm. So, in all Matthew Stafford, he, played, he only played eight games. But can you tell the people at home what his record was in those eight games? Three, four, and one. Mm. But I've never seen a quarterback. Do so little, get so much credit for doing absolutely nothing. It has been 10 years since Aaron Rodgers went so. to one Super Bowl and won one Super Bowl. That's it. One is all he's been to. Since then, he's six and seven in the playoffs. And I can shoot holes in the six wins he had. All of them are a little fluky or a little lucky. How many, how many games have Tom Brady won in the playoffs in which his team has given up 37 points? Well, all I know is he's got six game-winning drives and six rings. Well, that's what Aaron Rodgers. Mm. You look at the games he's lost and see how many points his defense gives up. Mm. Because you remember you were complaining and crying, Tom Brady threw for the most yards in playoff history, 505, and Coach Belichick's defense. Gave him 41 points with no Malcolm Butler, who had been dog out. Aaron Rodgers' defense gives up 37. Like, hold up. We just saw Aaron Rodgers' defense last year in the championship game. How many yards did they give up? They gave up 1,715 yards rushing. Mm. All I know is that Aaron Rodgers hasn't been Aaron Rodgers for about five years because I can show you a statistical decline in each of the last four years. Skip. He's not who he used to be, and you just cling to the past. Yeah, hold on. You cling to 2016. That's all you got. Hold on. You keep telling me Aaron Rodgers was 18th in QBR, but the guy that's below him had a QBR worse than his. That would be one Tom Brady. Yeah. You say yards per attempt. Tom Brady was lower than him. Completion percentage. Tom Brady was lower than him. But somehow you believe Tom Brady had a worse record if, than him. If you gave Tom Brady last year Devontae Adams, what? he might have been the one seed. In well, the if, you gave, if you'd have gave Aaron Rodgers a, a, a Randy Moss mm. and gave him Gronk mm. and, no tenor, and Bill Belichick, he might have won 10 Super Bowls. Uh, Tom didn't have Gronk or Randy Moss last year. Whoa, 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 whoa. He had Gronk. For about ten, about a decade, mm. so give Aaron Rodgers Gronk for a decade. Mm. Give Randy, give give Coach, give uh, Aaron Rodgers Coach Belichick mm. for twenty years, mm. and I guarantee you he have more than six Super Bowls. Aaron Rodgers is an old thirty six, and Tom is a young forty three. <laughs> you know, That's you know. what's happening. <laughs> okay. No mercy. Cam Newton is looking to prove a lot of doubters wrong this season. He came in as a Tier 3 QB from the Athletics Pool of Coaches, which put him in the 19th overall spot. One coach said of Cam, quote, I don't think he's Superman anymore. Shannon, do you agree 
He is no longer Superman. Yes, if the nine's being reported, Patrick Chung is also opting out for the Patriots. So that puts the number down, I think, about six. Skip, he's going to have to be more than Superman in order to pull this team to where it, what we think the Patriots should be. Skip, I, I don't know with the the way it is now, having no offseason, everything's going to be in turmoil. Skip, I, I don't know if he can be that this year. I think it's going to take him an, at least another year before we see the, uh, uh, the Cam Newton of old and not an old Cam Newton. But he's done a lot of talking. Mm -hmm. about the teams that did not want to give him an opportunity yep. to play quarterback for their teams. He gets an opportunity to back that up mm. real soon. Okay. What I love, the money quote in all these quotes about Cam and the athletic mm -hmm. piece was, Cam is not inheriting a great supporting cast. Right. The point being, you better be Superman or you're going to have a long <laughs> season. And I think only now is Cam starting to realize with these defections to right. start with on the other side of the ball right. for the most part. There, there's not that much left right. on offense. Not much got done to beef up the offense that Brady struggled with last year because they were not very – I thought it was the worst supporting cast right. in football, and Cam just inherited that. He also inherited the pressure to replace the GOAT. Mm -hmm. Well, that's not fair. That's not a fair trade-off. Well, Skip, he's going to need all the super friends that's at the uh, Halls of Justice. Yep. I mean, he's going to need Batman, Superman, Aquaman. He needs a lot of them in order for this team because – like you said, there's not. it's not like the cover was just stopped mm -mm. with talent on the offensive side of football. Nope. And now a lot of those defections happen on the defensive side in free agency. Mm -hmm. And now they're getting defensive guys opting out. So he has his work cut out for him. Yep. When uh, XGM summed it up, said he was always a baller. And I give that. That's what right. Cam Newton always was. Well, he's going he to have to be, be that. that. Tenfold. He's got a Ooh. lot to prove. He just posted on social, Dear haters, I have so much more for you to be mad at. <laughs> just wait. That's it for Undisputed. Thanks for watching. We're back same time tomorrow. Have a good day, guys.